Plankton's and Gilda fans. And half forward Plankton's, he will try and lob this one into the goal square. It's a high kick. The pack's there. Can St Kilda take a goes in, gets bundled out of the way. In goes Big Walsh for Essendon. Well, players going in very hard. Neagle from the back pocket. A long kick up towards Burns for St Kilda. He can't take the mark. Once again, players going in very, very hard. And up like said, holding the ball. And it'll be a free kick to Darrell Cunningham. IG looked a high tackle to beam, but the umpire was right there, and Daryl Cunningham looking for somewhere to go. The lead into the forward pocket, the ball's well placed, and the mark has been well taken too. Lockett is the uh, man who took the mark. Well, I think a little bit of anticipation there, Jack. Uh, the he looked part. as though he had it, uh, even from here up in the commentary box, but he did drop it in the end, but still. Tony Lockett could be the equalising goal, and he's missed it. He's pushed it out. It's through 4-1 behind him. So St Kilda couldn't get a fairly easy shot there, Peter. Yes, I think uh, Tony wouldn't be too happy with that shot. I think full forwards, anywhere from 40 metres towards the goal, they expect to kick them. There's a long kick. Make a beautiful drop punt right down towards centre wing. The ball hits the deck. Baker, the West Australian, couldn't take the ball. Jeff Cunningham was in there hard after it. In they go after it. At St Kilda, coming away with the ball though on this occasion it was Cross, getting it up on the left foot, up towards half forward, Crow couldn't take the mark, playing against his old club, the ball is smothered off Watson's boot, he goes in after it, drops the ball, and uh, the umpire said now play on Jeff Cunningham, gets it across to Andrew Cross, he lines up the goals and fires, and what's he done with it? He's put it through a beautiful goal. Well, St Kilda fans ecstatic now, St Kilda lead. the ball forward, holding the man they call by the umpire. Now Cunningham, Daryl Cunningham, going out wide, looking for Crow. It's a good kick, Crow. Yes, he got there. I didn't think he was going to make it for a moment. Now, he's a good kick sometimes. <laughs> now, he could just about make the distance for the torpedo. Now, he's got the drop. Yes, it's a high one. Up lock, it's in front. He's got
kilda as they've got the loose man out there in Daryl Cunningham, obviously playing on the back line, Jack, which is a surprise. Yes, yeah, St Kilda one point in front, eight points playing seven. Muir, Robert Muir on wing position, member side playing on now. He's given a hand pass out. Cronin takes it forward, down to Ward forward, pass though. Gross trapped it. He's trying to get it to a teammate, hooks it back toward the half forward zone. Good defence, holes. Watson lost it on the way through. Could have been a free kick there, but the umpire calls play on his carry. Takes it away for Essendon. It's been placed toward Hawker. The man in front should have held the mark, but Fashini comes on the scene. Can't take it. Picked up by Hawker. Hand passes out. Baker goes forward for Essendon. A well-placed kick to the goal square. It goes. And a great one-handed mark for seven. Brilliant mark. Great one-handed to seven within the square. He'll kick from the end of the square. Great mark. Should feature in the mark of the day on World of Sport tomorrow. Paul Salmon, point blank range. He will kick from about 15 metres out because the man on the mark has gone back. He's trying to uh, box him out here. He can run up to the edge of the square if he wishes. He's going to do it now. But Salmon will take the shot point blank and it's a goal. Excellent mark by Paul Salmon. Great height. Uh, Daryl Cowie himself is a fairly tall player, would be about six foot four. Of course, Salmon about six foot nine. And those extra Do you think inches, he was being held because he only had one hand. Well, contest, I think it was a bit of both. I think uh, in those situations, Jack, that the, the strength wins out. And that was a brilliant mark by Salmon. And I think that they're going to be a problem for the St Kilda defence with Salmon and Simon Madden when they're resting down towards that full forward position. Kicking for goal, the only difference in the game. Essendon 2-1 to uh, St Kilda 1-2. Bahaj are putting Essendon forward again. Another difficult chance. Oh, good attempt there. Not taken by Ezard. The ball on the turf. Pushing and shoving going on. And the umpire set a free kick going the way of Cowie. Cowie off St Kilda. Should bring the ball straight down the middle here for Evan. But he's going out wide. To the outer flank he travels. And the big men fly, but not take the mark. Ball would miss the easy one at the back. I think he got a shot. The ball doesn't travel through. It's a big pack forming up there. We saw a lot of players contesting. Sharp was one, but uh, off St Kilda. But well, well Greg Sharp's an interesting player too. Jack, of course, he's formerly of Carlton, and I've seen him play many a good game in the uh, reserves, and uh, good to see him trying out for the new club. There's a free kick. Looks like it's going to Simon Madden for popping that one high across the head. It's Madden immediately gives the hand pass across to Foles. Foles streaks away with the ball and kicks down towards full forward. Oh, they're ducking back. Almost a mark. Not paid. Grabbed by Bahaja. He snaps at the goal. Salmon ducks back but can't get to it before the ball beats him and bounces over the line on the full, in fact, said the umpire. And it is a penalty free kick down there to Alphonston. He kicks towards centre-half back, but a lovely mark is taken there by Glenn Hawker, chipping in front. He gets onto the left foot. The pass is there. The lead was there by Danaher. He's got it too. He swings around. He's holding the ball, said the umpire. The decision. Is, uh, coming away with it is Phil Narkel. He sprints away. Beautiful pass to Muir. Robert Muir goes to short pass to lock it out. He comes in his mark. That is beautiful football. Yes, he took it cleanly too, but now his confidence will be lacking because he's had two easy shots for goal and both have missed. Well, I'd say it'd have to be right-hand goal post, Jack. Well, let's see what he does. But Tony Lockett going for his third goal, or going, trying his third time for a goal. And this time he's got a goal. not see better football than that anywhere that was magnificent football and use of the ball Narkel coming down the wing there the ball was got out to him originally and then he instead of just blazing away up towards full forward hoping someone to do he gave that beautiful foot pass St Kilda 2-2-14, Essendon 2-1, Madden got a little tap down, Narkel grabbed too high, the umpire calls play on, Burns is in there, in trouble, and the umpire still calls play on, hurried out of the pack, kicked high, toward, up toward the Danaher, can't take the mark, the, the defence of St Kilda standing firm, Machini pokes it back toward Crow. he does the wrestling, can't take the mark either, picked up by Bradbury, the kick is smothered, in they come now, and it's a good piece of football, the ball driven down there, by Sharon, down to the full forward zone, lock it again, hand passes out to Cross, he shoots at goal! He missed. Oh. He missed that. 
Well, they're Kilda. desperate. St. They Kilda are desperate. Great. Good football, Pete. They are desperation plus by St Kilda at the moment. They're a pretty young side and uh, they are really giving it everything at the moment. And uh, admittedly, it's only early in the game. We've only been playing 12 minutes in this first quarter, but they're uh, troubling Essendon at the moment. Here's the captain of the side, Alphonston, charges through. And I'd say, well... It was off the boot, set the boundary up. Plus, our yes. down bounds on the full move, Neagle. Off well, the boot of Elphinstone. Oh, this will be a great duel there. Neagle against Narkel, and uh, two similar names. As the ball comes down towards the half back line, Sharp punches it away. In they go after it. It's on Essendon's half forward line. Was he ridden into the ground? He was, said the umpire. And the free kick will go there to a great player for Secure last year in Robert Elphinstone. Now, this could be reversed. Hello, it's on, it's on, it's on. There's a big party going on here. Well, Pye got the uh, hand on the book. How could he stay underneath that pack? Anyhow, it's only a lot of pushing and shoving. I'm sure there haven't been any blows thrown. But still the ball has been retained by Robert Elphinstone. Oh, gee, Sharon and Bahaj are having a bit of a dip down here too. 15-metre uh, penalty going the way of Elphinstone, which brings him right down to the wing position. So play continues now. Should be Neagle's mark. Yes, move Neagle. Centre wing, Daryl Cunningham on the mark. Things all probably settle down now after that little old occasion. Up towards all oh, the pack, they flew high. In goes Duckworth, who he streaks away. He goes for the long kick. It's bouncing towards the forward pocket. Which way will it go? Over. Glenn Brown went in after it. Glenn Brown, number 19, of course, was selected on the forward line, but has lined up right in that last line of defence. Boundary throw in. Big Salmon will do the ruck work for Essendon in that uh, pocket position. Big Giant. Young Ruckman tried to hook it out the back of the pack. It's a big pack that forms up. A snap came out of the pack. By whom? I'm not Salmon. too sure. It was Salmon, was it? Was Salmon. He's, he's pretty got agile. He's got agile. Agility, agility, I should say. Mm, he's very agile for a big man. Only one behind resulting. So it's 2-2 playing 2-2. Scores level. The short pass from full back, which I don't always agree with, but it's been taken by Sharp and popped over to Narkel. Narkel could give it down to Morwood, but he goes uh, a little bit longer than that. He goes down toward the centre wing where Morwood does the roving now. Put himself in good position, but good play by Neagle. Picks up on the wing. Oh, good smother too. It's forced off the hands of Cunningham over the boundary line, and we'll see a boundary throw in. Allen side bottom in trouble behind the play. I think he's coming off the ground. He could have a bit of concussion there out on this wing. I don't know where he is in the bottom of the like screen. like a shoulder. I don't know. To be he honest, doesn't he, look too happy. Looks like the medico's holding up the left arm as though something's happened to the shoulder. Well, the was the the player trying to get the kick in goes for Sheeney. Was bundled out of the way. The umpire said he was pushed in the back. And Silvio Fascini on centre wing will take this kick. He's going to go up the centre of the ground. He's got great pace as he kicks it towards Lockett again. Oh, good effort by young Lockett. Walsh gets it. Hand passes across to his teammate there in Hurd. Hurd gets it down towards half back flank and the mark is taken by Foles. He immediately gives it across to Carey. Carey streaks away and hooks it back towards the half forward line. Terry Danaher playing at centre half forward. Couldn't take the mark. Goes back in after the ball. Coming through is Williams. Grabbing it is Fashini. Gets the quick kick in. Up towards centre wing. It's grabbed there by Burns. Burns up towards half forward. Bradbury punches it away. In goes Walsh. He streaks away. Gets it across to Weston. Good team play by the Essendon back line. The short pass finds Leon Baker. Baker going fairly long. Up towards seven. He's the target today. He's pushed in the back and the umpire will pay that. Power into the back of uh, Big Seven. So Salmon will take a shot now for his second goal. Well, Daryl Cowie, there is no doubt in my mind that Daryl has played fairly well early, although Salmon has kicked the goal. He must play in front of uh, Big Salmon, Jack, because you cannot get over the, a player of six foot nine and a half. No, he has to anticipate the lead, and I, I think should start one metre in front of him. Salmon going for his second goal, trying for Essendon's third goal. He scores level before the shot. No, big Paul Salmon. Essendon expect big things from this big fellow. And they've every reason to because there's a lot of talent. Kick on its way. It's a goal. Yes, and, uh, well, a good goal to Salmon. He's going to be a real danger up there at full forward. As we said earlier, he and Madden, when they're changing up at the forward line, the... A uh, runner went out to speak there to Daryl Cowie, but... Uh, I think to tell him, as you said, he has to be, uh, be in front of Sam. Right, the scoreboard showing 3-2 to 2-2. Underway again, the bounce goes up. Uh, big crow in the ruck, I noticed. Gets a tap down, Bahaja takes it, trying to barge his way through. 
I thought may have been tackled too high, but now it's been picked up in front of the mark. Cross can't get away with that, and it has to go back behind the mark. It's to be taken here by Burns. Burns putting the kick down toward the half forward zone. Mewers there, can't get to it. It's been tapped away. A chance for Bradbury. He's pushing the back, and that will be the decision. Yes, a good decision too. By umpire Carbines here for Bradbury. Well, only six points between the Messenden leading. Peter Bradbury, I Peter should say. Bradbury kicks high into the centre. Oh, Danaher up very high. Good mark. Great mark over the top of Burns. Danaher going up towards Salmon again. Cowie still at the back of Salmon. And Nass once again, Salmon takes the mark. So, uh, Peter McKenna's words of wisdom, and I think the words of Tony Jewell, too, haven't got through to Cowie. He has to be in front. And the run is out again. Pete yes, is on his way out very, again. Very, very good player, Paul Salmon. And uh, oh, he Essendon. cannot possibly play him from behind. Yeah, it's about in the old language, six foot nine. Like, that's big, isn't it? So it is, Jack. How would Salmon. you have been playing on him? And I would have needed a little step ladder. Salmon going for goal number three. Crow's gone down to pull back now. Well, I don't down. know whether that's a good move. Max Crow was a brilliant right player last year. Well, he was a great player at centre half forward last, last year. Should be back there. Bounce of the ball. Cowie has gone into the ruck. Mahaj, as busy as ever, now towards the half forward line. A good mark taken there by Greg Sharp. Sharp, the former Carlton player, was an excellent player too there in the reserves for a couple of seasons. On the left foot, he goes out wide. Not a good pass because ducking back and taking an easy mark is Gary Fowle. He's going up toward Hawker on the half forward line. Finds him with a good pass too. And this very talented player in Hawker looking for a lead. The short pass is on. Danaher, the recipient. I uh, don't think Danaher would score from there. Although the breeze is favouring that shot at goal it's coming across the ground the way he's going in toward goal so it could favor the kick but it will take a good 60 meter it's going close through for one behind touched off the hands of crow and also the uh, back man there in brown so essendon have moved their score and answered to St Kilda's 2 2 14. Essendon score being changed now to show that it's four goals, 3-27. Of course, losing uh, side bottoms made a, a difference because Cowie's had to go into the ruck too, Jack. There's Salmon trying to take the mark, couldn't do so. On the bottom of the pack is Williams. He tries to get away with the ball, and the umpires have been dynamite today on holding the ball. Here's a free kick to St Kilda to Phil Crone and their Western Australian import, or one of their Western Australian imports. He's ducking back onto that left foot of his. He kicks it towards centre wing. Burns is there for St Kilda. Can't take the mark. On the bottom of that pack was Cowie. Uh, was actually the player who went for that mark. Burns waited for him. He couldn't take the mark there. Cowie's having to do the ruck work. Uh, Paul Tomei has gone to centre half forward. And of course Max Crow has gone down onto Salmon, which has probably been forced on coach Tony Jewell. There's Bahaja again down towards the half forward line. Over the back of the pack is Izzard. He's got a ton of pace. Goes in after the football and very lucky to get that one. A free kick all the same to paid by the umpire to Ezard. He should be able to score from there. He's right in front, 40 metres out. Kicks a high drop part. This one's floating beautifully and it is a goal. Well, another goal to Essendon. Essendon starting well in the first term here. 5-3-33. St Kilda 2-2-14. St Kilda had two chances through the boot or off the boot of uh, their full forward in Tony Lockett but couldn't convert. That's a, a bad uh, mismatch down there too. Sharp playing on the Rovers down there in the back pocket. Right, centre bounce once again. 33 playing 14. Essendon in control at this stage. Madden got the tap down. Burns caught in possession. The umpire said the ball held to him. Yes, getting back to that, Jack. Uh, Sharp would be about six foot three. He's playing on Izzard, a nippy little rover. I think that's going to create all sorts of problems down that forward pocket. We'll see how that one unfolds. Cowie taps it down, but the umpire said uh, the decision will be 
free kick to Bahadur. He went for a hand pass out to Watson. Watson coming in from the flank on the outer side. Has the kick smothered. A chance for Brown of St Kilda. Left the ball behind. Pretty tough football in there. The umpire said a bounce will take place. It's in the square, but favouring the half-forward zone of Essendon. So the ball about to be put down. Essendon 33. St Kilda 14. After missing two easy shots through the boot of Lockett, or off the boot of Lockett, Cunningham can't make contact. Picked up here, the ball hurried out by Baker, but nowhere in particular. And it's a free kick going St Kilda's way to be taken by Jeff Cunningham. <laughs> Robbie Muir having plenty to say there. Action. This is what the completed Club Yarrawonga will look like. Now let's go and look at the real thing. Eagle, he ducks away, gets the hand pass in, out towards the centre of the ground. Oh, good play, Daryl Cowie. But a oh, lovely hand pass comes out to Bradbury. That was beautiful football. Down towards Salmon again. He can't take the mark this time. In goes Ezard. High oh, cleverly gives it across to Terry Danaher, who snaps it. And high and wide and through for one behind. So the Bombers doing all the attacking at the moment. They've moved on to five goals, four, leading St Kilda, two goals, two. They've been playing 23 minutes of the first quarter here at Moorabbin. Peters has given you the score, 34 playing 14, so 20 points of difference. A very big pack of players in that <laughs> half-back position. I thought it was going to be a, a bun fight, but leading out to take the uh, kick was forward. Going downfield, looking for... A player downfield, can't find one yet. Sharon. Sharon it was. He got a hand pass to Markle. Looked a bit slow on that occasion. Pushed in the back. And the umpire said, hold it. Bad in actual fact. I'll tell you what, it hasn't taken Phil Wong to, to learn. He made sure he got it too, Yes, didn't he? he looked a bit slow though when he had that ball. Oh, it's a good mark taken down there by Bradbury. Bradbury at the back of the pack. Trying to play on, I feel. Muir not allowing him to do so. And I can't see any reason for Muir allowing him to play on anyhow but Bradbury takes the kick and plays on toward Danaher up those Cunningham to spoil it's been picked up and hurried out of the pack and straight to the opposition a good tackle against Duckworth Hurd's in trouble hand pass comes out toward Ezard uh, picked up now by Hawker he's lost it now and comes back out again Ezard once again gets it going Elphinstone's kick not a long one it comes to Duckworth can't hold on the second attempt it's on the turf Duckworth being tackled and the umpire said a bounce will take place Gee, that Jeff Cunningham is a good tackler, uh, Jack. He is, isn't he? Would be one of the best tacklers playing league football. He made sure uh, Duckworth, Billy Duckworth, didn't get away with that ball. He came in like a ferocious lion. Here's the ball uh, just uh, on the centre-half forward side for Essendon from the centre. It's towards centre-half forward. Bahaja was grabbed when he didn't have it. It's on half-forward flank. It's grabbed by Watson. Watson gets it back to Bahaja. Bahaja back to Watson. That's good team play. Watson straightens up. Left foot fires at the goals and he's off line and through behind but I think he is going to get another kick yes I think he may but I don't know why he went to his left foot I don't know why he did that but he was knocked down after he took the shot at goal and the umpire has awarded a free kick now to Tim Watson you see doing some adjustment to his foot footwear there so that was left foot snap was uh, it did bewilder me he had enough room to shoot right footed but he elected to go left footed so uh, he quite did. right Jack he had tons of time but yes. still I suppose when you're out there you sometimes think you're under pressure when you're not and yes that's true Timmy Watson with the crew cut and going for Essendon sixth goal you shouldn't miss from there either no it's 45 degree angle another good camera shot of this one as you see Tim coming in to try and put this one through with a drop part. oh he's kept it out oh hit the post he started it out wide it didn't come back enough and hit the top of the post so a bad miss by Tim Watson, but the Bombers moved just a little bit further in front. They've moved on to 5-5. St Kilda hanging in there on 2-2. They will have the breeze. That's an unusual next thing that the St Kilda players do at the full-back kick-in. I'll go back to that later. Fashini hand-passing back into Mace. Mace moves the ball down toward the half-forward zone. It's well trapped there, too, by Tomei. Gave it to Darrell Cunningham, who threw it. Back to Tomei. He's gone short to Burns. Viewer should have gone down to take the hand pass. He looks for Lockett. Can't hold it yet. Yes, he does. Good mark. Another good mark. He played on. Shot toward goal. The umpire said disallowed. That's no, a mark. And uh, it is a mark to Tomei. Now he's had uh, to lock it. Uh, to lock it. Yeah. Yeah, it's what I should have said, isn't it? Good mark, that. Oh, gee, he's been impressive. Very, very impressive. He could easily... What's he kicked? One, One goal two. already, One and two. he missed two sitters, Jack. He could easily... You know, three or four goals this quarter. Well, this could be his fourth goal, but he's only... One to his credit. He's missed two relatively easy shots, but none as close as this, Peter. So Tony Lockett should kick the third goal for St Kilda from here. 
Oh, boy. Don't it's a goal. You were saying you thought he missed. Oh, boy, the goal umpire ran right across. I've got a sneaking suspicion that that just got in. <laughs> well, I think it did just but get still, in. Still, the main thing is it's a goal, and that's two goals to Tony Locke, and he's uh, playing an excellent game up at full forward. 15 points the difference, Essendon leading. 27 minutes into the quarter. Umpire side bottom. Simon Madden has had a very quiet quarter against Cowie. And Cowie looks a much better player when he's in that ruck. In goes Williams after Dresden and can't get away with it. Now it's the flying Dutchman Vanderhaar. Left foot down towards half foot. All oh, the bounce uh, eludes uh, Mace on that occasion. It's grabbed by Williams. He goes for the short pass. He had two men to give it to, and it's Baker, the West Australian Leon Baker. He's looking for someone to pass it to. Now he's going to go the long kick on the right foot. He's a beautiful kick either foot. Down towards the forward line. Oh, beautiful mark taken there by Max Crowe. Immediately plays on to Alphonston. Alphonston gets away with the ball up towards half back line. Cowie, a good effort. Couldn't take the mark though. As players pounce on top of the ball on half back flank for St Kilda, and umpire Carbines will come in and bounce the ball. Peter, what I was getting at to before, when the St Kilda full back is uh, kicking in, all these St Kilda players go to centre half back and then lead out from there. We'll try and show you that later on. But the play at present is on the half forward zone for Essendon on the members' side of the ground. Essendon are leading by 15 points over the home team, St Kilda, and we're getting up toward the 28-and-a-half-minute mark. You're watching the first term in the opening game for season 84. Salmon taps down. We've got into the back of the opposition, and a free kick will go the way of Cow. He looks a much better player, Daryl Cow, as I said before. When he's on the ball, as he gives it across to Max Crow. Crow with a very high drop cut. This could be out in the full. A very poor kick by Max as a uh, free kick down there will go to Peter Bradbury and Robbie Muir on the mark. Always fair to come Robert today as uh, puts out the hands trying to uh, smother that ball up towards the back line. The ball is thumped away. It comes to Vanderhaar. He gets the kick in towards the forward pocket close to the boundary line and the ball bounces over the line and out of bounds. Scoreboard showing Essendon. Five goals, 5-35, leading St Kilda, 3-2-20 in a very good first quarter. Essendon do have a slight advantage with the breeze coming in for, from the outer wing to the goal they're kicking the left of screen oh picked up and snapped well smothered though diving in his crow got pushed in the back the umpire said free kick the big max pro so we won't see much of this first quarter left now we're 29 and a half minutes in and Essendon leading by 15 points over a very determined St Kilda team at the back is Neagle can't take it Martin's there Martin takes it away really looking for Lockett can the kick travel that far Lockett behind his teammate certainly showing good form today. Young Tony Lock. Now he's going. He's having his fourth shot at goal. He's had two goals so far to his credit. Just oh, too fifth, easy. Fifth shot, actually. Oh, having his fifth shot. He's, he's had four already. Kicked two and missed two easy ones. He's kicked his third goal. Great play by Narkel originally a, as he's yes, spun off the mark pack. By Lockett. A, a tremendous mark by Lockett as he came over the top of Weston. He kept his eyes on the ball. Second bite of the cherry as he came down to the ground. And he is, uh, they've made a switch. Uh, Weston has gone to centre half back and they've put Walsh down to full back uh, because of Lockett's great form. 35 plays, 26, Essendon lead. Cowie gets the tap, it's in there with Tomei. Can't do a great deal with it, holding the ball, the umpire said. Good decision. Too it was a good decision. Bynes, he made no attempt to hand pass it out, Jack. Hawker puts it up high and long. Salmon from the back, it's up, can't take it. Picked up and kicked by Mace. Up to the heavens it goes. In comes Madden, but I'll chip again with a great pass. It's Cunningham. Jeff Cunningham. Plays out wide, was meant for Muir, can't get there. The man in front was Bradbury, and Muir gave away the free kick. Muir playing in the back, can't do that. Yes, he's pulled out of position there as Bradbury goes for the short pass. Mace is there. Oh, did he have the ball? Didn't have it at all. The umpire said he didn't. But the fine line there, but the, the umpire gave Mace the benefit of the doubt. He and Muir looking very alike as Mace goes to short pass. And he finds Daryl Cunningham, and it's been a very impressive quarter by St Kilda. My word. Essendon, the hot favourites to win this one. It'll be interesting to see if the young Saints can keep it up. There's the kick. He's looking for Lockett again. Lockett and Walsh. Lockett. Oh, he's thrown out of the way. That's a free kick to Lockett. Yes, I agree. 
great That's guy. A great kick. Hey, look at Pierre in the background there, having a few words to say. Well, Robbie, he's Keep always cool. firing. <laughs> Keep it cool, Robbie. Don't take the ball. Don't well, that's the way he should do it, though. He, not run in throwing punches, Jack, but just be in there. Look at him getting the ball back to young Lockett. Tremendous, uh, Robbie Muir. And Lockett is a magnificent quarter by the young Paul Siren. And Siren's gone. Well, this will lift the Saints if he can kick it. There it is. It's going towards the goals. Best. Offline. And, in fact, didn't make the distance. So, at quarter time here at the Moravan Oval, after him. Picked up by Cross. He breaks away. Drives up to the half-forward zone. Looking for Lockett. He's been a great player. Nearly a free kick. The umpire said not. And Essendon come away from defence. The ball driven straight across goals. Rather dangerous football there. Well tackled there. And Foles has the ball taken out of bounds. Oh, there's that tackling again. Jeff Cunningham, as I said, in the first quarter, Jack would be one of the best tacklers in league football. No doubt about that. It's in that forward pocket area for the Saints. A very good first quarter by the Saints too. They kept right with Essendon. It's grabbed there by Foles. Foles hooks it back towards the half-back line. Faschini is there, punches the ball over the line and out of bounds. And the young St Kilda players have given it everything so far in this match. Of course, we must remember Essendon are in front. 5-5-35 five, five, to St Kilda. 4-2-26. There's side bottom who went off. It looked to be uh, injured in that first quarter. Couldn't get that one as uh, Walsh came away with it. Is that a free kick for a trip? It is. It will go to Carey on half-back flank. Well, both teams had very successful full forwards in the first quarter with uh, Lockett kicking three for St Kilda, missed an easy two, and also Savin kicking three goals uh, for Essendon. That didn't appear to be a free kick, but Neagle will take the free kick now and kick up toward Vanderhoe, who had a very quiet first term. The ball tum uh, thumped to ground. Uh, in there is Hawker, can't get it out cleanly. He now gets it out to Vanderhaar. Vanderhaar's long hand pass to Ward Bradbury. Bradbury dummied the push in the back. Now it gets forced out, taken away by Cronin. He was in a leg. The umpire said the bounce will be affected. Yes, good umpiring there by Shane Carbines. They've done well, the, these two umpires. They umpire certainly have. Carbines and side bottom. Well, they're young umpires, uh, Jack, and they're very good umpires, and they let the game flow a bit and only pay the certain free kicks. On the bottom is Bahaja. Gets it out, umpire, and Jack Edwards umpired well for umpire Carvajal. He must have heard you. He threw it out, and that's exactly what the umpire said as we see Alan side bottom on half back plank. He Kicks. went off the ground in the first quarter with it appeared to be an injured shoulder, but he's back on now. Oh, a good mark by Daryl Cowie, too. He's lifted his game over to Narkel, who was a good player in the first quarter. He's looking for Lockett again. Out he comes, Tony Lockett. The bounce beats him. In going after it is Leon Baker, the Western Australian, playing for Essendon in his first game. It's in that back pocket position as Duckworth goes for the hand pass. A further hand pass from Hurd. Comes towards the half-back line. Grabbed by Burns on the left foot. He fires! And he's put it through. A great goal by Greg Burns. Well, you won't see too many better goals than that. That was sheer skill and courage got him through there and strength. It was a fantastic goal. Kicked by Burns. I can't say any more. It was a, an enormous goal. Team lifter, Jack. A real team lifter. The bounce of the ball, the scoreboard showing 5 5 Essendon, St Kilda on 5 2. Jeff Cunningham hooks it back towards Cowie. Cowie drops the mark. They're coming away with it is Daryl Cunningham gets it out to Burns, who just kicked that beautiful goal. He's got the short pass to Lockett, the big fella from full forward. Out he comes, knocks it on cleverly to Daryl Cunningham. No free kick, said the umpire. As Daryl Cunningham tried the stage a little bit for that one, it's on half forward flank, and we'll see Cowie doing the ruck work against Simon Matt. Good umpiring again. Madden pushed Cowie out slightly, taken by Watson, given to Carey. Carey gets a hand pass for Harger. For Harger in trouble. Nowhere to go. A hurried kick puts it down to Ward Vanderhaar. Not having the best of days. Only holding the man decision there to Cronin. Picked up by Elphinstone. Putting it up forward. A chance for Cowie. Cowie and Walsh. Neither take the mark. Hurts there. Can't take it. Now Cunningham suffers off the ground. Can't get it. Put it break back. Oh, it did it. It's tried hard to get back, but it did not well, we did speak before of the first quarter here. It was a great first quarter. Essendon kicking 5-5-35 uh, to St Kilda's 4-2-26. Now we see playing on from full back as Preston. It's out on the full. Billy Duckworth, it was. Oh, uh, sorry, Jack. Billy Duckworth. Yes, he's had three opponents. Lockett coming away with the ball as Faschini. No one on the mark. That was bad play. Lockett comes out. He dives. He goes in after it. Beautiful play, young Lockett. In they go after it again. Here's a chance. In goes Sharon into the open.
looking at this game, you'd wondered who did play off in last year's grand final. I know Essendon uh, is still playing well, but these young Saints, Peter. Well, determination and endeavour at the moment, uh, Jack, and they're feeling and they want to win this game. St Kilda 6'3", 39, Essendon 5'5", 35. That's the story on our scoreboard here. Five minutes into the second quarter for Rabbit. That comes out to Burns. He taps it on the Sherrod. Sherrod goes a hand pass. Should have had a kick. He taps it to Cowie. Cowie gets it down. Bradbury takes it. Shoots it out again. The hand pass comes over from Folds to Bahaja. Bahaja goes from Watson. Can't find him. A chance for Baker. Baker nearly being held there. The umpire calls play on. In they go and out they come. The ball in this pack now goes back in toward Watson and the umpire set a bounce. Those Essendon players are under a tremendous amount of physical pressure at the moment. The Essendon Kilda are going in very hard and uh, the umpire's taken the ball off uh, Watson. Interchange, Negan off to now coming on. And it's a free kick to side bottom and a 15 metre penalty brings him down the centre half forward. A side bottom goes a long kick. Lockett's there. He comes from behind. He flies. He's nearly marked it again. In goes Simon Matten, picks it up in the goal square, hooks it back, here's Danger. In goes Andrew Cross after the ball for the Saints. It's in that back pocket position as uh, Walsh tries to charge through the ball but couldn't get away with it. Peter, I must make a comment here. Every time Lockett flies for the ball, he's got no rover backup. You're he's quite right, Jack. I reckon if you fed on him, you'd get yourself three or four goals every week. Here's another chance. Paul Morwood has the ball smothered over the line and out of bounds. Scoreboard. 6-3 St Kilda, Essendon 5-5. Boundary throw in, the forward pocket for the Saints. 25 metres out, Madden gets a left-handed tap down to Bahaja, who was tackled too high. But the umpire said, holding the ball, now this has happened a lot. I've seen a few high tackles today, but when the man's been in possession, the umpire's penalised him for holding the ball. I'm not saying that that is the rule they're going to apply, but that's why I've seen a few of them today. Well, they're tackling. St Kilda's tackling, Jack, has been tremendous. They have tackled hard and haven't given the player Bahaj on that occasion. Had no chance of getting rid of the ball. And this is the shot for goal by Cowie. He fires. Oh, hit the post. So that's one apiece. Yes. But the Cowie, who started off and pulled back against Salmon, but Salmon took him apart in the first term. Salmon kicked three goals, as did Tony Lockett for St Kilda. Now... From the full back position, Danaher sets himself and took the mark. Good mark. Border playing on. Essendon in a spot of bother. Five no points down. Yeah, no, that was bad football. In they come, Crow will do the wrestling card. Oh, someone being held. Crow it was being held. And he will take the free kick from centre half back. Big Max Crow will be looking for Cowie. Cowie leads into the ball. Walsh's opponent. Walsh into the back of Cowie. No mark taken. Picked up by Bradbury. He goes out left-footed toward Van der Haar, who's very quiet so far, and still in that same situation. Here's a chance now for Essendon. Is it Williams or Reza? They look very similar. It's been picked up by Burns. He'll swing back grandstand side, brings it around. And another chance for the Saints to go forward. It's been tapped out. Should have been taken, really. And it's been hooked away now by Donnell. It's just come on the ground. Donnell places it back into the half-forward zone. And standing his ground was base. Missed an easy mark. Another chance for St Kilda. The umpire said the throw. Yes, holding the ball. Good decision again by the umpire. This is Alan Izzard. He centres the ball. He's looking for the short pass. A great play too by Izzard as he got it across there to Terry Danaher who made it look easy, that mark. But in fact, it was a pretty difficult mark as he ran in the same direction as the ball was going. The skipper needs this one for Essendon Ooh. to bring them back. Essendon trail five points to the home team, St Kilda. Here's the kick from Danaher, Terry Danaher, and the goal up by did not move at all as he puts it through for his first. Well, a great goal by Danaher, the skipper, to bring them back, and uh, Essendon are by no stretch of the imagination having an easy day. That's for sure, Jack. We've gone nine minutes into this second quarter, although the time clock says 15 minutes. So lucky you've got that old faithful clock there, Jack. Yes, it's a fantastic old clock. That has been going around a long time, and may it continue to go around. Centre bounce. In there with the headgear is Narkel. You'll see he came into screen now. Salmon got the tap down. Taken by Burns. Carey in the way. Carey can turn some kill to back now. He'll come down the member side. Will he? No, he's going into the middle more. Looking for Watson. He was going to be outgunned by Alfred Stone, but Watson has mark. been paid the mark. But strong mark, huh? Yes, it was a very good mark by Tim Watson there on centre wing, and uh, he's trying to 
He deliberately didn't catch that ball, trying to fox a 15-metre penalty as he's yelling to his teammates up forward to move. There's the kick, a lovely kick, a long, low trajectory kick up the bar. Oh, beautiful mark, Simon Madden. And uh, full marks to Watson for that kick too as he's in the background. You can't see him on screen. He's complaining to the umpire that he should have got a 15-metre penalty, but Madden is the man has taken a screamer. 30 metres out from goal, directly in front, and normally a very accurate kick. Madden can put Essendon seven points up if the kick's straight. John Target hit the post. It never really looked like making it. Did no, it, it didn't. Now, I want to watch here. When the uh, St Kilda fullback is kicking in, all the St Kilda uh, men go into the centre half back position. Now you watch this, and then when the fullback is about to kick in, they explode and go in all directions. It looks like the thick mark on Saturday morning. Now you watch them go out, and the fullback. Oh, he's undecided now. He's got he's a 15-metre 15 15 15 penalty, so that messed that up. Jack, <laughs> oh, look at the back kick. Back. Look at the kick. Nearly to centre half forward. Cowie couldn't take the mark. In they go after it. This will be a bounce up. Uh, just past the centre, slightly towards St Kilda's forward zone. So Essendon two points in front, 11 minutes have gone now. You're watching the first, second quarter from Moravin. Jack, there must have been 28 players in that pack. Yes, we'll watch that again. Here's Narkel. Oh, he looks a class player, Phil Narkel. He was grabbed high. Yes, and the umpire was under that one. He was grabbed very, very high. I thought he should have received the free kick in the first instance. I agree with that. There was Narkel. one there earlier. With the, with the helmet, a shocking kick straight off the side of the boot, up towards the forward pocket. Here's the chance there. Lockett's got no one to support him down there. He was caught with the ball. Play on there, said the umpire. In they go after it, and umpire Shane Carbines will come in and bounce the ball once again. Speaking of Tony Lockett, he's only 18 years of age, only played 12 senior games with St Kilda. To use the old language, he's six foot three and 14 stone nine, and he certainly looks a great prospect. And that's a free kick there against Daryl Cowie at that bounce. It will go to Big Salmon. Salmon goes and plays on as he gives it to Shane Hurd. Hurd streaks across the centre half back area and will kick it towards the wing. He's looking up there for Danaher. He flies, punched away there by Glenn Brown. Brown goes in after uh, that's Baker, the West Australian Leon Baker, up towards half forward. The ball goes, but Harge is in there. Was he grabbed when he didn't have it? He was, said the umpire. And it is Tony Bahaja right on centre wing. From this position, he should go into Big Matt, who's calling for the ball. At centre half forward. He's placed it in that direction, but can they get into the picture? No, Matt has got himself upset there. Big Crow picks up, kicks up towards Weston and Muir, but Walsh takes the mark, plays on quickly. Billy got caught twice, but got out of it with a hand pass to Weston. He puts the ball up high, Madden's the target, and the mark should be taken by Matt. Yes, Simon Madden playing out in front of Max Crow, a lovely mark. He's a dangerous player up forward. He's got the short pass, and he's found him in Vanderhaar. And uh, on that occasion, Vanderhaar, too quick off the mark there for Robert Elphinstone, and he's marked about 15 metres out on a very slight angle. Been a pretty quiet player so far. Has yet to score a goal as he fires at this one, and the goal umpire says it's a goal to the Bombers. Essendon now eight points up. Been a great game so far, though. I think that's something that stands out at the moment. Uh, certainly, the secure side of their lacking in height badly. Uh, yes, Jack, they're they lacking would a little have bit to, there. in most league games this year. They would have to get the ball to the ground and run it down to their forward line to Young Lockett as quickly as they can. Bombers lead by eight points. We go at 13 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Could have been a free kick for Sheedy's way. The umpire said no. A big pack forms up. Coming out was Cronin. Brought out by uh, Jeff Cunningham. Bounces badly there uh, for the man in front, Cowie. Walsh with a bit of pace. Well tackle. Well great tackle by Cowie. Now Peck. She's played a great quarter, Jack. We'll go back here and see if Lockett gets any assistance from any rovers. So this one goes short and the ball's taken by Muir. Well, I reckon, oh, he's playing on. He's gone the short one to Jeff Cunningham. Again, nothing. And this Muir didn't want to uh, have a shot for goal. It's actually cost them five metres, I yes, reckon. Yes, he went backwards by five metres. And really and Jeff Cunningham's not the greatest kick in the world, Jack. But it wasn't a great angle he was on, so I couldn't see any point in so doing. But uh, Jeff Cunningham, Peter McKenna said can't kick. Puts it through for goal. Well, 
Pete, that one, they always, they always prove you're liars, and he's not normally a good kick, Jeff Cunningham. That was a beautiful <laughs> kick on that occasion. But uh, Robbie Muir took a big chance here. He should have had that uh, shot himself from where he was, but still good team play. And the main thing is they scored a goal, Jack, and then the scoreboard at the moment, 7-6 to 7-4, two points the difference. The breeze does favour in, uh, the end of Kilda is kicking, only from the outer side, though. Watson takes the tap down, comes to Bradbury, gives it out to Bahaja. Bahaja went for Hawker, Hawker finds it. Left foot kick finds uh, Williams down there. And uh, Essard, I'm sorry, to the, as a uh, few uh, two players confused, Essard and Williams, they look very similar. But this one we see is Alan Essard going for his first goal. Should score from there, the breeze is slightly against him. Cross more than against, I should say. He aims for the left-hand goal, post, he should be right. But he's hooked it. A goal shot, only one behind. Now we'll see if we can get this pattern. <laughs> All the St Kilda half-backs go into centre-half back. You watch this. It looks like the big mark, like I said. And once the full-back's about to kick in, they explode in all directions. Now, there's a lead out there, and Sharp is the recipient on this occasion. Most unusual. Sharp takes it from half-back now. will drive up toward the wing position with a poor kick. Machini gets it out. Elphinstone in trouble. Gets the boot to ball up toward Camp. Oh, a free kick should have been holding the man, but it's grabbed there by Darrell Cunningham. He fires at the goals. Which way will it bounce? It bounces high. It's a great goal as they brought it down from the fence. Well, we're seeing some football. We, of course, don't know how the other games are going. Hello, there's an injured player down there. Could it be Cowie? It is Cowie. Well, he should have received a free kick in that instance. He got clobbered across the neck. He got hit from all angles, Jack. They're calling for and some assistance. And that is rotten luck because he's played a tremendous quarter for the Saints. They're calling for some assistance from the bench or from the boundary line. So Cowie down. I think they should try and get another player on as quickly as possible. We can't actually say just how badly he is injured, but the centre bounce takes place. Side bottom gets a tap down. Burns, left foot, goes nowhere. They all dive in. That was Zanel threw himself into the pack there and uh, at risk to himself. And we'll see a bounce. Cow is still on the ground out there, being assisted now by three or four. I'm not surprised. Jackie copped it from about four angles there. The Saints leading by three points. Burns punches the ball clear of the pack up toward the half-back position for Essendon. Comes out to Walsh. He hand passes to Folds. Folds puts it down to Bradbury. Bradbury can't take it. One hand up top's a bit hard to take. And uh, boundary throw in takes place. Cowie on his feet, but only just. He looks a little bit uh, distressed out there at the, in the square. Looks like he may be coming off. Bad luck for St Kilda. Well, they're actually a man short at the moment, Birdsley, if you take it for granted. He can't take any further part. As it's up towards half forward flank, Vanderhaar tries to get in the hand pass. All oh, three, they come in hard after the ball. Grabbed by Paul Vanderhaar, kicks it high. Doesn't gain much distance, plenty of height. Cowie's in there again after the football. That is Grabbed by Watson. Watson kicks it high towards centre half forward. Madden's there against Pro. Over the back of the pack, it's grabbed from the Saints and it's kicked by Glenn Brown. Down towards centre wing where the mark is taken down there for the Bombers by Frank Donnell. Donnell with a hand pass to Carey will get it moving down the members' flank. Elphinstone sets himself, but there's a free kick downfield against Sharon. This will go Essendon's way, of course, will be taken by Bahaja. Thought of the short pass, now goes to Vandahar or Madden. Big Madden's in there, and takes the mark. Well, Crow, uh, Max Crow was very slow reading that. That was uh, st standing out like Granny's tooth, that one that Madden had uh, ducked off to the right. Max was a bit slow to react, and, uh, of course, that meant the difference between Max Crow, uh, Simon Madden taking the mark or not. Madden is right in front, Simon Madden. He has yet to score a goal. He missed a sitter approximately five minutes ago. He's normally a good kick for goal. Let's see what he does with this one. He stabs at it and the goal umpire doesn't move. Straight through the centre. First goal to Simon Madden. So Essendon go back in front now. St Kilda had led. Now Essendon three points in front. The time clock, 19 minutes into the second quarter. The game you're watching uh, through the eyes of seven is coming to you from Moravan Oval. And Cowie has gone off and uh, Paul Tomei is playing at centre half forward. Centre bounce. 8 7 8 4. Essendon lead. 
Madden got a good tap to Bahaja as well. Caught, chucked the tackle though, just about chucked it out of the pack, taken by Carey. Carey's small kick heads toward the boundary line, well placed I thought. It stays in play and could have been a free kick Essendon's way to, uh, to Ezard, but the umpire said no. We'll see a boundary throw in instead. Boundary throw in, Madden will oppose side bottom who did leave the field. Oh, free kick to Madden. Side bottom left the field early or oh, halfway through the first term but has returned, as you see. Now it's Cowie off the field for St Kilda. Madden places the ball toward Van der Haar. Up they fly and a man at the back is a great pass. Salmon. It's Big Salmon again, had a great oh. first term. Big tall Jeez. fellow. What a mark. He's a great player, young player. He's going for his fourth goal. About the longest shot he's had though, Peter. Yes, it would be, Jack. He's normally a pretty good kick. He's a very accurate kick normally, and, uh, gee, what a promising future he's got. Well, the breeze will be slightly from his left to right-hand side. Oh, bad kick. Well, Petey, not having much luck with your anticipation. No, that, you're right, Jack. Just that bit of extra distance. He's a very accurate kick from about 30 metres in, but just that little bit of extra distance. And there he's goes the raffle Let's again. see this again. There they go. You... Picked it beautifully, Jack, as the short pass came out. Now, that was a mark, I feel, to Phil Cronin. Uh, Bashini might have that ball taken off him if he's not careful. Janelle uh, shaping up. The umpire awarding still the, the mark or free kick to Cronin. There's a little bit of blood uh, being put out today. Radbury, oh, off an easy one. Got one in the back line. Straight in the side, Jack. Here's the umpire, St. Elmo. Bradbury, left footer. Dana Vanderhaar's in there. Oh, the man in front, Dana Hurt. Madden leads. It's a good lead. It's a good pass. Uh, Salmon, I should have said, and the mark taken by Salmon. Now, we missed the last shot. He's not much closer to goal, Peter, than what he was on that last attempt. Well, it'll be a similar sort of kick, won't it? He'll be struggling to get the distance, so he might just uh, try He laid back on the last one, hard. though. He yeah. laid back on it, so he didn't... Uh... Andrew Cross has been replaced by Peter Keel, and it'll be interesting to see how Peter goes, because... And uh, Cow, Daryl Cow is coming back on the ground, too, as Salmon shoots a goal, doesn't quite make the distance, and it is forced through for one behind us. Cowie is back on the ground. I'm very, very pleased to see that because he's played a tremendous second quarter, I reckon, at Senar Ford. Daryl Cowie has contested, done all the ruck work. Scoreboard, Jack. Essendon, 57, St Kilda, 52. And coming round the flank down there was Sharp. Put it out toward the wing position where Hurd's in hot pursuit. Oh. Robert Muir used the hip and shoulder to his advantage there and used it well. And the umpire <laughs> set a boundary throw in. There was nothing in that. Only hip and shoulder. <laughs> The Essendon crowd were giving him heaps out there too, Jack. Dan Hur and Sharon did battle, but Bradbury wins out here, picking up and left footing into the half forward zone. Van der Haar comes out. Oh, got up high, but it wasn't Van der Haar who took the mark, it was Watson. Watson looking for the chance to play on, can't see the lead yet. And so he's waiting for Salmon. Gee, they're going to play through this fellow. Salmon goes up, but Cunningham had the mark. Well, the umpire set a free kick for holding against uh, the two St Kilda players down there. Max Crow was one of them and it has gone to Paul Salmon again. Once again, it's that awkward distance for him. He doesn't yeah. appear to be a long kick, Jack. No, he's just uh, testing him out a bit. He's getting too far out from goal now. The last two attempts haven't uh, made goal, so we'll see if he can improve. It's about 50 out. He lays back on a peak. See, that's the whole point. Goes close though, and a good mark down there for mine to Elphinstone. I fear would be paid. Did you notice how he laid back on that yes, kick? Yes, he does lay right back, and he, I don't think he's got a lot of power in his legs either. Uh, Jack, as the ball comes down towards the half back line. Oh, good strong play, but it's grabbed by Mahaja. He goes for the short pass to Dadaher, punched away by Glenn Brown, which is good play. He's doing a good job down there, Brown. He's uh, playing close and tight on Danaher and obviously just there to try and nullify him and he's doing it fairly well. We're 24 minutes into the second quarter and Essendon lead by five points. 57 playing 52. Essendon in attack, only 50 metres out from goal. Madden hooks it out and a chance there. A little snap by Williams goes off target and uh, over the boundary line, but no penalty. One boundary throw in, which gives Essendon the chance now to score. You see how close they are to goal at the boundary throw in. 
Danaher tried to hook it down, couldn't do so. It's forced out of the pack, picked up by Sharon. Could have got a shorter kick in than that. Looks for Morwood, comes down to Morwood, comes back to Morwood. Mace has the ball in front of him, looking for a free kick. He eventually gets it out. It's been hurried up the field, though. Been kicked up high by Sharon. And it's a chance for Bradbury, doing a good job for Essendon. Going into the half forward zone now. Brown comes in to spoil. And a good mark will be paid on that occasion to Danaher. Good mark on the second grab. That was a great mark, Jack. So he will go for a shot now for about 45 metres out. I'm pretty sure that he'll score. So Essendon uh, can, uh, can improve their score just prior to the uh, time on period. Terry Danaher has already kicked one goal. He would be 40 metres out as he kicks high and it looks straight. It is another goal and that is his second. Well, it seems to me as a little bit of bite went out of St Kilda's game, Peter. Well, I think they had the momentum up, and I think, I honestly believe it made a big difference when Cowie was crunched at centre-half four and had to go off the ground for that five minutes, and they lost a little bit of momentum there, but still we saw St Kilda do that a lot last year too, Jack. At the bounce, side bottom and Madden. Madden got it down, Bahaji nearly got it out, he eventually did get it out as a matter of fact. Watson picked up the crown, but the umpire sent a free kick going St Kilda's way. Now St Kilda can start attacking from here. This play with the ball is Phil Cronin. He kicks towards Cowley. He was pushed in the back, and Cowley has been a handful for young Kevin Walsh in this quarter, although 15, Walsh does two. some nice things. <laughs> and a fifth and dynamite, the umpire was there. Umpire side bottom. Dynamite said he was uh, stalling for time as Cowley comes right in and is now within kicking distance of goal. They will take a good kick from there. He'll be should. about 35 metres out. Lockett did lead out, but Cowley's going to ignore the lead and take the shot for goal. There's the kick, it's floating. I think this might float just offline, that one, and through for one behind. So that's a goal that should have been scored, but still it takes the Saints a little bit closer. They've moved on the scoreboard to eight goals, five Essendon, nine, nine, as the ball is marked by Frank Donnell on halfback flank. Essendon lead by ten points over St Kilda. Donnell putting the ball down to Watson on the wing position. Watson in front, strong mark. Plays on very quickly you can see a lead at the half forward zone coming in there as mace to spoil the Harger picks up the crumb hand passes out a chance here for baker baker goes goal but he's off target oh, that was beautiful football by this and a great play by Harger as he got that one across but what a bad miss jack it was a bad miss had plenty of time a little bit of pressure applied from within i thought not from without so from the full back position crow kicks up long Narkel misses the trunk. Hurd gives it out to Folds. Folds looks around for another short. You can see Bahaja, but the big man's the target. Salmon got up one-handed. Burns is in there, tackled too high, and the umpire said free kick to uh, Burns of St Kilda. He's looking straight up the ground, hooks it in toward the side bottom position, and he can't... Yes, he has been paid, not the mark, but the free kick. The umpire said he was being held on the arm. Alan side bottom, set a wing, kicks it towards half forward. He's got the lead. Darrell Cunningham, he's got a great pair of hands. Swings onto the left foot. He's looking for Tony Lockett. He kicks it high. Lockett caught behind. Will fly. He's a beautiful mark. Tony Lockett as he had to sit. Flew high on the back of Billy Duckworth. He's marked 10 metres out, 45 degree angle. Well, the same young fellow in the first term had two very easy shots. A little bit further out from this, but not difficult shots by any stretch of the imagination. And he missed two shots before he then kicked three goals. So he's had five shots for three, two and one miss. So it's Tony Lockett, point blank range, the angle could be a bit of a problem. He comes in, he shoots and he's missed it! Peter, any words of advice? Well, I've got uh, a, a perfect word of advice, uh, Jack, but it sounds like you're a know-all when you start uh, saying, but he, he definitely well, isn't. He holds the ball far too high. He should get that ball down Peter Hudson style down below his knees and to get over the ball a bit but that sounds as if you're a bit of a know-all no, that's still, why i asked you the question there's the kick coming out towards the half back line daryl cunningham's there almost took the mark no free kick said the other. he's trying to claim the mark side bottom knocks the ball away in goes frank donnell he's got a ton of pace gets it out there towards his arm oh robbie Moore came through hard 
Good play, Peter Keel. Gets the hand pass to Sharon. Sharon's got it over to Burns. Burns hooks it at the goals there. Which way will it bounce? It's going towards the goals. Touched by Duckworth over the line and through for another behind. So the Saints move on to eight goals, seven. Essendon, nine goals, ten. A little bit of desperation being shown out there by Robert Muir in particular as Duckworth puts the ball up high. Danaher flies high. The ball comes to turf. Another chance for Essendon now to move the ball out. Looks like Folds moving through to drive down toward the half-forward zone. A good mark for Robert Mace. Mace and half-back held the mark well. Hand pass to Oppenstone oh. in trouble. He gets it out to Keel. Keel now moves the ball quickly to the half-forward zone. A free kick upfield. A free kick upfield. Was that the siren, Peter? Yep. It was the siren. So a free kick upfield after the siren. And now a 15-metre penalty has been applied against the Essendon side. And the umpire's just heard the siren, which been some 15 <laughs> seconds ago. And Robert Muir is telling the Essendon... And lock it. where to get on the market. It's lock it, is it? No, no, it's going to be uh, no, taking it off lock it. They're giving the free kick there to Narkel. Narkel, 20 metres out. St Kilda's chance to score after the siren. And it's through. Essendon leading by only three points. Side bottom. Moses Madden. Madden got the tap for Harger just about through that one out. Taken here by Jeff Cunningham. The left foot kick travels down to the half forward zone, but nobody home. And an easy mark. Oh, 15 metre penalty against Lockett. Will be paid to Bradbury. Bradbury hand passes back. Duckworth, normally a good kick. Puts the ball up toward the half forward zone. It's forced over the top of the pack. No free kick in that. Folds is there. Hand pass out quickly for Harger. Mahaja will look for Salmon. No, he's got a hand pass. It's a short hand pass coming into Williams, who shoots at goal, but he's way off target. And out of bounds on the full. Yes, on the wrong foot as Mahaja gave that hand pass across to Williams. Williams on the left foot, hooked it straight across his body, out of bounds on the full. Essendon led by nine points at the first change, and at half time, as I told you, have a three point advantage over St Kilda. St Kilda kicked 5 5 in the second quarter to Essendon's 4 5. Here's Silvio Fastrini. He's been a fairly quiet player. He goes for the short pass. It's a shocker. Straight in the arms of Weston. Weston's gone for the short one, two to Terry Danaher. Sticky fingers. Play on, said the umpire. That was Bahaja to Bandahar. He drops the ball. Play on now, said the umpire again as the St Kilda defence. This time through, Alphonston hooks it back towards the half back position. In goes side bottom. Gets shoved in the back, but the umpire said he threw it. And it will be a free kick going Essendon's way on half forward flank. And in the arms of the trainers, it looks to be Van Haar behind the play. Yes, play transferred now by her. The big punch of Crow comes to Burns. Burns looked for Cunningham. Not a good hand pass. Comes out to Ward Machini. Machini's pace could win out, but Denell's got pace also. They both go down. Well done, Frank Denell. Good the fighting football. Nagel got pushed in the back and will take the free kick. And oh! <laughs> back we go again. We've had a few dust-ups here this afternoon. Nothing that I could see that the umpires have reported. But Neagle going the hand pass now. Carey will move the ball from the outer wing position into the half-forward zone. Ray has set themselves and the mark taken in defence down there by Sharp. And has done a good job too down there, Greg. Sharp has picked up the Rovers down there, which was a big task to ask him, but he's done pretty well. On the left foot, the kick goes out. Was it out of bounds? Yes. On the full it was, said the boundary umpire. And... We have been playing two and a half minutes into this third quarter. The scoreboard showing 9-7 St Kilda, Essendon 9-10, leading by three points as Shane Hurd takes the mark on half-forward flank. He'll be looking for a lead. He's being told to kick high. Hopeful for Salmon, Oof. who's been a great uh, mark today. Oh, could have been a free kick to Salmon. He was dragged out of that pack. Yes, yeah, Salmon will take the free kick dead in front of goal. Now, this young fellow in the first term kicked three goals for Essendon from about this range. In the second quarter, he had a few uh, shots at goal. Took a little bit further out and couldn't make goals. But uh, I think from this distance, Peter... Well, it's unfair, isn't it, to be six foot nine and uh, have that agility and ability to uh, Jack. He's going to be a great player, Paul Salmon. And uh, Max Crow has... Well, he's done some nice things down there since being shifted, but he's finding that great height there of Salmon very difficult to master. There's the kick. I think he's offline, and he is. He's missed another one. 
so uh, he and young Lockett have had many shots at goal and here it is again Jack that uh, formation they're forming up around about center half back there must be a pack of about 25 players yes they form up at the half back position and then when the full backs about to kick in the St Kilda players go everywhere and it comes off again too as the short pass comes out to Greg Sharp on half back back oh I think he's put it out of bounds on the ball that's a poor kick by Greg Sharp when he was under no pressure whatsoever Yes, bad football on that occasion, giving Gary Folds the free kick. Folds can kick fairly long. He'll be looking for seven again, I would think. No, he's gone in short this time, very short indeed. And the man with the ball hand passes out quickly was Baker. He hand passes back to Folds, who drives up towards Salmon. Crow can't hold it. Hand pass by Madden to Salmon. Salmon gets on the left foot, hits the post. Oh. It. He hit the post with a great left oh. foot snap from a big man like that, but he hit the post with it. But oh, he has played well, but he hasn't really got the benefit of his good football. He ha has only kicked three goals and kicked those in the first term. Now out they go again from the half back position. The full back kicks in. This time the target is Burns. We've seen some good marks here today. That was a gripper. Burns shoots it further upfield. It's been taken here by Cronin. Cronin looking upfield now, looking for a tall man in Cowie, I would believe. Cowie sets himself, Madden comes in, can't take the mark. Now he comes back now, and cross drives, goal with Lockett's the target. Big, strong Lockett, can't take it. Not backed up by Rovers once again. It's Lockett going after it, can't pick it up yet. He's still in there, gets it out to Muir, but threw it, I thought. The they umpire all calls play on, they all stop waiting for the free kick, which did not eventuate. Frank Donnell gets it down towards half forward. Oh, good play there, and that's a mark. Good play there by Jeff Cunningham as he found Paul Moyd about 45 metres out from goal directly in front, kicking into a slight breeze. Essendon lead by five points, the time clock five minutes and 20 seconds into the third turn. Well, young Salmon had difficulty uh, making the distance from where he is. There's another injury to St Kilda. Looks like Robbie Muir this time. Behind Paul Moore, though, is normally a very long kick of a football. He aims at the goals, kicks across the face of goal, and the ball is forced through for one behind. So the Saints move on to 9-8, Essendon 9-12, and there's Robbie Muir. And it looks good, it could be his wrist. Or shoulder, I'm not too sure the way the trainers are holding that arm. So Muir coming off the ground with the applause of the St Kilda fans and Essendon going into attack through Vanderhaar. To Folds goes now, up towards Seven again. And Seven takes another mark. Good lead out in front of Crow. And Seven now, well, let's hope his luck does change because he's, as I said, kicked three in the first quarter and has missed about five since then, I would Great think. pass uh, by Gary Foles there, streaming down the ground and instead of blazing away at the goals, he saw the lead and a beautiful low foot pass hit him right on the chest. Well, seven. 25 metres out from goal. Essendon leading by four points. He's kicked it. Essendon lead by ten points over St Kilda. Yes, and uh, although St Kilda are stuck with Essendon, uh, you always get that feeling about Essendon that they could run away at any moment. And uh, St Kilda are giving away a tremendous amount of height all over the ground to the Bombers and sometimes getting towards the end of a game. Admittedly, it's only in the third quarter. The Saints will have to answer that one quickly, I would think, Jack, and not let Essendon get a run on. Yes, well, they, they're playing well enough. Now at the bounce. Big open territory down there on St Kilda's forward line, but Madden winning in the ruck again. The ball tapped down, coming through. His key. Oh, oh boy! I don't think he hit him. I think I'll he tell missed you what, it. The elbow was about three feet in the air, though, Jack. Yeah, he didn't hit him with it though. He ducked under it. But back to the football. Down we go, and it could be a mark to the man in front. The umpire says not. It's been forced out there by Morwood, and the mark taken in defence uh, by the. Doug Cox, Cox getting the booze there because yes. he's an excellent Kilda player. Of course. Jeff Cunningham. He's playing well. Looking in there for short. Burns is the target. Oh, 15 metre penalty would have to be applied, I would think. I don't think it is. Oh, well. Thought it should have been. Now, can he make the distance from about 50 metres out? We're take a good kick. They're finding it very difficult from there. There's just a slight breeze. But Once again, Peter, there are no rovers down yeah. in that goal square for when Rocket contests the mark if the ball does drop short, there's, I think. There's the kick from Burns. It won't make the distance. Up they go. The ball was tried to force through by the Essendon defenders. In they go. Here's a chance for Cowie. Lock it. He's kicked it. That's his fourth. Yes, he's done well. Tony Luff should have kicked, in my opinion, at least seven. 
I agree, Jack. He's played a tremendous game at Port Boy. That was very, very good play as he grabbed it. And good play by Daryl Cowie, who battled that ball to the ground. The scoreboard showing Essendon 10-12, St Kilda 10-8, and that's exactly what they needed. All right, let's see what happens now. Side bottom being beaten by Matt. Got the tap that time, but they didn't get to a teammate. Picked up by side bottom. Off the side of the boot block. It's there. Hey, I tell you what, this kid's not bad. 15 metres. He's a good player, this oh, player. He's a good player. I'll tell you his stats in the moment. This kid, I said, should have kicked seven goals. I say kid because he's eight, 18 years of age. He's only played 12. This might be his 13th league game now. He's 6 foot 3 and 14 9. And he's going for his fifth goal. Will he get it? Point blank range. Dead in front. It's through. Well, Tony Rockets kicked five. And the scoreboard showing 74 to 72. Essendon trailing. That's exactly what they needed, Jack. As I said, Essendon scored, got that 10-point break. So Kilda had to kick one or two goals to be with them to have any chance in this match, I feel. And in fact, they've hit the front against the breeze. And uh, they're right in this match with a chance. Side bottom, up high, taps it down. Comes to Fashini. Left foot's up to Ward. Cowie punched away on that occasion by Weston. Warwood's there, can't take it. It comes through to Donnell. He got one in the back, taken by Cunningham. Tremendous football, Jeff Cunningham initially to get that ball out as he got it over the top there to Narkel. Narkel once again didn't blaze away and Lockett going for goal number six. Let's see what the young full forward can do and this will lift the stands here at St Kilda if he can kick it. He stabs at it, it's swinging back, it's a goal! Six goals to Tony Lockett and the Saints come from everywhere. Well, would you believe that Essendon played in the grand final of last season against Hawthorne? St Kilda with a no-hopeless, if I could use that word. Uh, fourth opponent going under Tony Lockett. Now Carey's gone to pull back, and he'll be far too small, I would think, uh, for Lockett. Lockett, six foot three, Carey about five foot eleven. And the Saints, I said, weren't, very, weren't a very good side last year, but my word, they're giving us the shake this afternoon. St Kilda lead by eight points. Side bottom, just got the tap, doesn't go far. Comes to turf. Can St Kilda go back into attack? They're about to do so. It's been driven off the boot of Tomei, down to the half forward line, with the mark taken by Weston. Weston of Essendon turns the tide. Paul Weston as well, was one of Lockett's opponents, or his first opponent, actually. There's a captain's mark. Beautiful mark, but it's a free kick. kick in the meantime to Cunningham. Jeff Cunningham has been outstanding play today with his tackling and his determination. Don't hand pass there. Kick it as long as you can. He's gone the short one, and that's a very ordinary kick and poor play by Jeff Cunningham. The ball back to the centre. There he is again, though, Cunningham. Over to Tomei. Tomei has the ball smothered. Great play by Hurd. Shane Hurd streaks across the half-back line and kicks it out wide. He's got a loose man there in Terry Danaher. The bomber's in trouble. Oh, well done. Oh, beautiful smother by the Saints. Oh, Morwood's got it in the back, and that's a free kick, and that's poor play by Essendon. Well, Morwood on the wing position out of side. will be looking into the half-forward zone, I would think, up toward Cowie. That's He's placed kick. it, yes, and Cowie coming in from the back. Can't take the mark. It's on the turf. Side-bottom hand pass comes out, and the Essendon defence stands firm. It's Weston once again. Drives them out of trouble. Little Fashini up high. Tap down now toward Tomei. Tomei gets it into Morwood. Morwood can't pick up cleanly. Hooks it underneath. A chance for Keel. Keel's left foot kick comes out up to the half forward zone. Could have been a free kick. That's given to Cowie. Over towards side bottom. Side bottom goes in with Madden in pursuit. That's side bottom and Madden. Madden wins out. Side bottom got the fumbles. A hand pass comes back to Carey. Carey's left foot kick takes them out of trouble. And a mark taken up there by no Bradbury. There oh, was no mark, Jack. But he called it a mark. It hit the deck. I thought it was. Still, the umpire may have played in anticipation. <laughs> yes, I don't think he could see. But still, there's Shane Hurd coming away with the ball. The Bombers there, desperate now because they realise they're in trouble. Weston kicks it long. Burns is there. A courageous mark. A real gutsy mark by Greg Burns. He could have copped the grandstand there. Oh, Markle gets bundled out of the way to free kick the Bill Markle against Tim Watson. And the Saints supporters have gone mad. Here's 
the short pass. Here's the other West Australian recruit there, and this is Cronin. Cronin with a hand pass. Beautiful play by Alphonston. He kicks long. He's looking for Lockett. Lockett and Carey. Oh! No, no, no mark. They odds the call. In they come again. Ball would come in. Got Bunner, got caught. A pie said holding the ball. No, Tony Lockett didn't oh. hold that mark. Sheer was a great effort, though, but you can see the height there. Jack's going to be a problem for Carey. And strength, too. Western hand passes out of trouble, or nearly into trouble. He gave it to Duckworth. He, from half-back, goes up. Another injury at the Pierce's side, side bottom. bottom. Again. And uh, it's a chance now for Essendon to score. If Williams can get the ball moving quickly, he does so. And a great mark and play on Danaher. Danaher swings round in trouble. Van der Haas caught. the goal on his left foot or gone back and had his kick and he turned straight into trouble. St so. Kilda eight points in front. It's Essendon in attack only 30 metres out from goal. Can that St Kilda take it out? Keel's free kick. Tackle too high. Decent Kilda fans are enjoying this. 15 metres. 15 metre penalty against Essendon for kicking the ball yeah. out. Tony Bahaja deliberately kicked it down into the fence and oh boy they've got their confidence up Jack. Yes, Peter Keel now what's he going to do? Is he going around the flank? That he's doing. Narkel's in there with Cunningham. They all fly. They're all getting too ambitious now. No teamwork in there. Could have been a free kick to the Essendon Cesar, but the umpire said no. We've been playing nearly 15 minutes into the third term. It's St Kilda, 12-8, 80. Essendon, 10-12, 72. Oh. And a charge for Essendon through Watson to go forward. He looks for fouls. The hand passes poor, and it's out of bounds. And St Kilda are doing this at the moment. Cowie is uh, manfully taken on all the big man work. Side bottom's gone off the ground. The only really two tall players they have at the moment are Crow and, of course, Cowie, who, in my opinion, has been a tremendous team player all day. There's the ball thrown out. It's grabbed by Cunningham, who's been great all day. The ball up towards the centre wing. In they go after it. It's grabbed by Hurd. Shane Hurd onto the left foot, hooks it back towards half forward. Up they go. Cowie couldn't take the mark. Great play, Peter Keel. Take it away, though, by the West Australian recruit there in Leon Baker. He gets it down towards set half forward. It's a free kick down the field against Robert Mace. And this could mean a goal coming up for the Bombers because Paul Vanderha will be taking the kick from 35 metres out, or is it Frank Denell? Well, they raffled that one, and Denell is elected to take the kick from 35 metres out directly in front. And you cannot afford free kicks down the field, Jack. No, and this, no, this fellow either, he kicks the ball a mile. Frank Denell, normally a great kick. Essendon trailing by eight points before the kick. Denell puts it up high. The umpire right underneath it. Essendon get a goal through Denell, and it's only two points of difference. Yes, and, uh, well, Robert Mace won't be too happy with that. He's a desperate player and trying very, very hard for his side, but uh, you can't afford late tackles, especially when a place kicking it down towards the forward line, and that was an easy goal to Essendon. At the moment, 12 8 St Kilda. Essendon 11-12, two points of difference, the Saints in front, we're seeing a tremendous game here at Moorabbin. St Kilda lead by two points, the time clock approaching 17 minutes, the third term on 7th Street League. Up it goes and down it comes, kicked by Cunningham, but nobody home for St Kilda. No one home at all at the half That's happened position. three or four times, Jack. They must be all kick chasing. Battle on now. Oh, could have been a free kick there, St Kilda's way. The umpire said no. Cowie pops it back overhead. The Pierce and Kilda's forward line is getting a bit rattled. Neagle wins out with a bit of pace there. He'll swing back toward the middle. He's gone in there. Ball went over the back. Into the back of the opponent. And the umpire's paid the mark. Gee, it could have been a free kick. Forward. For the kick out. Forward kicks up high. No mark. Play on to game. Duckworth gets it out to Watson, he can't make contact, it's on the turf. Desperate football being played by Cross, and oh. the umpire said a, a bounce will be oh, effective. Gee, he's a little goer, Andrew Kilda. Cross, look at that. He's in, into the packs every time, and a uh, strong little bloke. And he could be a very promising player this year as a rover for the Saints. There's the ruck work again, Watson gets it on the left foot. It's all the Saints, though, as Pacini's got it. He ducks away, goes for the long kick up towards Lockett. Out he comes, too late though this time, and taking an easy mark. One of Essendon's better players today in Peter Bradbury. Gets it across the base of goal towards Carey. Carey has a bounce. Lockett in hot pursuit. Carey kicks it right out wide. He's looking there for Donnell. Donnell against Cunningham. The ball bounces back. There's a bit of pace being shown there by Doug Cox. And no wonder as he's a 
uh, stall gift runner almost. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if he was running next at the Easter Carnival. Jackie's that quick. Well, the boundary throw in taking place on the outer side wing. Essendon trailing St Kilda by two points. Cowie doing a great job, as Peter McKenna told you. Bahaja picks up for Essendon, looking for somewhere to go. He straightens up, drives towards Van der Haar. No star, free kick to Van der Haar. The umpire said he was being held, so a free kick will be taken by Paul Van der Haar, well within scoring range. That would be about 45 metres out, and Van der Haar has one goal to his credit at this stage. Yeah, well, Paul Tomei uh, grabbed him by the shorts there as that ball came down. That extra height there put Tomei under a lot of pressure as that quick kick came down. Van der Haar is a long kick of a football. Let's see what he does with this one. It's a drop punt. The goal up by moves across, and he says that's a goal for Van der Haar, and that is his second of the match. Well, St Kilda haven't given up the fight, of course. Essendon have just got to the front, 84 playing 80. It's Essendon leading by four points at this stage of the match, which is 19 and a half minutes into the third term. Was, Peter and I have seen a very interesting game of football today. A lot of people thought it was going to be a one-sided affair, but believe you me, it has not been that way. The Bombers, four points in front. Cowie in the ruck, beaten by Madden, comes to Foles, he'll drive long, and does he have? Down to the forward line, here comes Crow, picks it up, oh, beautiful pick up by Max Crow, playing against his old club, a long kick, there's Burns again into the back of the pack, grabbed by Foles, who was a very long kick, up towards the forward line, but a nice mark ducking back there, and that is Silvio Faschini. Gone to Alfredstone on the half-back line, Calling for the ball as ball went out, out the back of Donnell. Well placed kick too, but uh, Moore didn't quite hold it cleanly. But he got a hand pass out. The umpire should hold the ball. Tough. Oh, he should have taken the mark, really, but uh, the, that he didn't do. So uh, Essendon will come into attack now through the boot of Donnell. Normally a good kick. No exception. Drives long towards Salmon. And Salmon takes the ball. Isn't it great when they've got someone to kick at? It was a bad play by Max Crow. Great mark by Salmon, but bad play by Max Crow. He, did, he attempted the mark that with him uh, and caught behind. He should have tried the punch, and he is a great punch of a football. Well, Max, Max Crow should Crow. try and get the front berth to make it harder for Salmon to mark over the top. Well, yeah. outstanding forward displays, Jack, by Lockett and uh, young Paul Salmon. Two 18-year-olds, yes. I would yes, think. Yes, they've done very well indeed. Salmon going for goal number five. Lent back on the kick, but it's another goal. Essendon go to ten points in front. Yes, and uh, Salmon causing a lot of problems down there on the forward line. He's kicked five, he's missed three or four shots. A couple that didn't make the distance, in fact. And uh, that great height and great skill of Paul Salmon is creating big problems for Max Crow and bad luck to the Saints. I think a big change has come out of the game since Sidebottom went off. It's made uh, uh, Cowie have to go into the uh, centre to do the ruck work and they're struggling now down at centre half forward. Well, they're struggling right across the half forward line, St Kilda, at this stage. If they can bolster their half forward low, a free kick to Westerland from an infringement in the square, so it gets driven in by Madden up high. They'll be looking for anyone who can take a mark. No one can at this moment. Taken out by Keel. The left foot kick comes off the boot of Peter Keel. Up toward Cross. Couldn't hold it cleanly. Taken away by Neagle. Swinging back on the left foot. The drive across goal or across ground. And standing his ground there uh, was a good attempt by Cunningham. Narkel went in but couldn't take the ball. And Bradbury gets pushed to the back. So Bradbury can get the Bombers moving goalward if he wishes. He's thought of a hand pass. Now he's gone fairly short. Not good football for mine. Might come off. Weston's hand pass comes out of the pack to Donnell. He rode the tackle well. Hooks back on the left foot and finds a teammate down there in Ezard. Ezard plays on quickly, shoots at goal, but he's off target. And only one behind. St so Kilda not looking as good now as they did in the first half of the game. Peter McKenna has told you some of the reasons why. They are breaking down across the half forward line, which is robbing their young full forward up there, Tony Lockett, any chance of a score. But that could change. There's the kick coming out to Jeff Cunningham, who has played a very, very good game. He goes in after them. See, one against two again. So Cunningham has, in fact, one against three there was there. And Cunningham did the only thing he could possibly do was punch it towards the boundary line. 
and over the line. So that was clever play, Cunningham. It's on that half-forward flank for Essendon as Simon Matten does battle against Cowie. Down to Ezard it goes. Ezard hooks it back. He was grabbed very high as he went to kick that one. And in fact, it's a free kick down the field set up by a side bottom. And it'll be taken down there by Williams. By Williams. He's looking for Salmon again. Van der Haas coming out. So is Crow, taken by Tomei. The left foot kick spears out toward the half-back flank. And a good mark taken by Morwood. Could have been a 15-metre penalty for Morwood now. Getting a 15-metre start. He looks for Burns. The strength of Burns wins out. He plays on well. He'll be looking for Lockett. Lockett leads out. The pass is not quite up to him. Lockett boots back. Now should have been a free kick. Free kick to Lockett. No doubt. No doubt at all. He was dragged off the football. So Tony Lockett will has a well he has a chance, I was going to say will have, he has now a chance to kick his seventh goal. A difficult shot. Not an easy shot for goal here. Fairly tight angle, as you can see, he's fairly he'd be in about eight to ten metres from the boundary line. Van der Haas has just been taken off the field for Essendon and been replaced by Leon Baker. But let's get back to the man of the moment in my book, Tony they, Lockett. Don't they need this, Jack, eh? The Saints? Or? They need it. They're trailing by 11 points to Essendon before the kick. Tony Lockett kicks the ball well. Is it straight, though? No, it's not. It's only one behind. So he's had many opportunities to goal. He's kicked six goals, four, and one miss, as I make his uh, statistics. The scoreboard showing 82 to... Uh, Sorry, 81 to 91. Essendon lead by 10 points. Strength for Danaher. Beautiful mark by Terry Danaher in front of Robert Alfredson. That's going, going to be a tremendous duel for the rest of this match. Danaher a long way from the half forward line. No, in fact, he's on the half back line as he kicks it towards half forward. Simon Matten's there. Up he goes and takes a strong mark. How he went up far too early. He gets the ball across to Donnell. Donnell fires at the goals. Back goes Max Crow, and he timed that uh, mark to perfection. As uh, Salmon actually had made the lead and was ignored there and Crow duck back took the mark just before the ball crossed the line. Got in short though to Morwood. Morwood takes the mark. Nagel uh, asked for the short pass but it was ignored. Coming upfield now. No mark taken. Brad Reeves played well. Can't gain possession. Sharon tried to pinch it and the umpire said no. Boundary throw in on the weak position. Members side. In front of the St Kilda stands now. The ball will come back into play. We're into time on by 40 seconds of the third term. Essendon leading by only 10 points over a very dogged St Kilda side. Hurried off the boot of Elphinstone. Up it goes. Sharon got into the back of his opponent. And a free kick will go the way of Bradbury again of Essendon. No leads forthcoming. You go into half forward, I would think, the attacking position. He kicks to that area where Madden takes up position. And Madden takes the mark. Beautiful mark by Simon Matt in the pack as he juggled that one. The only player that looked like taking the mark. He's a long way out from goal. Paul Salmon has actually made the lead. Well, he it's shouldn't do that from there. He should uh, a bit too early. In, a bit too early anyway. The lead. Madden's going for the long torpedo oh. punt. It's a shot straight off the side of the boot down towards the forward pocket area. Silvio Pasini, tremendous pace and skill there. He's gone for the short pass. The oh, Daryl Cunningham slips over. Hurd goes in after it. The umpire said he was grabbed and he didn't have the ball. And Shane Hurd will take the free kick on half forward. He gives it across to Merv Neagle. Neagle on the left foot. Hook, hooks it down towards the forward pocket. Up go the pack and the ball is thumped over the line and out of bounds in that forward pocket for Essendon. Scoreboard 13 13, Essendon 91, leading St Kilda 12 9 81, so 10 points the difference. The Bombers in attack, only 40 metres out from goal, taken and hand passed away by Cronin toward Narkel. Narkel couldn't keep the ball in play, I don't know that he really was intending to because it was dangerous practice to try and bring it back in Essendon's attacking zone. So up they go again, tapped down at the front by Salmon. Forced around by Folds, good mark taken down there by Sharp. Nowhere to go, 15 metre penalty against Danaher. Will bring uh, Sharp up nearly to the half back line. He's gone in fairly short. The height of the Essendon players is giving St Kilda some concern. The St Kilda fans are appealing for a free kick to Darrell Cunningham, but the umpire said no. Boundary throwing, seven out now, doing the ruck work on the centre wing position. Got the tap down, taken away by Watson. Here's Danger for St Kilda. If Watson goes goalward, he puts it on its way. It's going close. It's another goal to Essendon. That was good football by Timmy Watson. Pete. Tremendous play, Watson. He got that explosive burst of speed. Away he went, lined up the goals. He saw that... Uh, the goals were open, didn't panic, just deliberated before he took his kick and made sure that he put it straight through the centre. The Bombers have stuck away to a 16-point lead over 
in St Kilda, 28 minutes into the third term. St Kilda are paying dearly for lack of height at this stage, Peter, I think. Salmon got it down, taken by Watson. The kick doesn't go far. No mark to Burns. Didn't travel the distance. Got thrown out of the pack. Picked up by Weston. Kicked very high. Underneath there was Robert Mace, but he might not get the mark. That little fellow in there should just about be played. I thought Hazard, the umpire, said no. We'll bounce. Well, I think that I don't like the half on it, but side bottom going off has made a tremendous difference. Taking Cowie away from the half forward line and having to do the ruck work. And side bottom was contesting well against Madden in the centre, Jack. Yes, and, he was. Uh, but still, they're not out of it yet, the Saints. Not the... far from it, Peter. They're far from out of it. Third quarter isn't over yet, although it's getting to that stage. High kick, more with a chance. No, the ball comes to turf. There's a pack forming up over there. Looks like Donnell hooking it out. Another chance in there for Keel. Got a hand pass back out. So Kilda has started to come forward. Here's the hand pass coming to Burns. Burns has gone for the kick. He's looking for Lockett again. He's there. Oh, bundled out of the way. Over the back there is Shane Hurd. He goes towards the boundary line. I think he'll make sure it goes over. He does exactly that over the line and out of bounds in that forward pocket. Now Once again, Peter, no rovers to back up uh, young Lockett when he Good does point, Jack. Just. Very good point. There's been no little break down there all day as the siren sounds to end the third quarter here at the Moravan Oval. Over Pants and Kilda come back. They are 16 points down to the visiting team in Essendon. So Madden will try and get them back onto the right path or keep them in front. Weston tried well. Didn't quite get the boot to it. Kicked off by Williams up toward the uh, half four zone. The umpire goes down in that little uh, skirmish there. Lost his boot and all. Narkle puts and Kilda into attack. He drives it down to the half four zone. Morewood robes it well. Can he pick it up cleanly? He'll be looking in for Lockett, but the kick goes too long. He's had a shot for goal, but it doesn't get through and punched through by Cox. Well, I felt a bit sorry for young Lockett there. I felt he gained a 10-metre break on his opponent. I think Paul Moore should have given it across to him there, Jack. Could have meant another goal to the young bloke, and more importantly to St Kilda. There's Hawker, who's been a pretty quiet player today, Glenn Hawker, I felt, yes, on the left foot, up towards Danaher. Danaher gets bundled out of the way. It's taken away from the Saints. That was by their West Australian import and Cronin. Down towards half-forward, Bradbury has been one of Essendon's better players. Up towards half-forward, almost a mark to the Bombers, and that's a free kick, said the umpire. Coming away with the ball is Bahaja, a beautiful hand pass to Simon Madden. Into the open goal goes Madden, and he is offline and through for one behind. So Essendon just moved a little bit further in front. They've moved on to 14-14-98, leading the Saints 12-10-82, and the Saints will certainly have to score one or two quick goals to get back into this match. Yeah, as he goes, all this explosiveness from the half-back line, all the back men gather at centre-half back and lead out in all directions, and it has come off again. Sharp now drives the ball up towards Sharon, who should have let his teammate Moore would take it, and uh, might have been a bit lucky here. Yes, it was poor play, that. Both of them going for that. There should have been talk, as you said, Jack. There's a short pass. That's a good short pass to Greg Burns on centre wing. Tim Watson on the mark. Burns, a long kick towards half forward. Up they go. The ball over the back of the pack to Weston. Paul Weston, the ex-Glenel captain. Hand pass to Simon Madden. Madden on the left foot. Up towards half forward. Robert Mace comes out in front. Terry Danaher covering a ton of territory. Goes for the long hand pass. Out wide to Shane Hurd. Hurd with a beautiful hand pass. Finds Alan Ezard. Alan Ezard 50 metres out. It's gone the short pass to Bahaja. It's over his head though and out of bounds. I think he should have gone for the straight shot at goal there, Jack. Well, either that or go for Big Salmon who's been doing so well. He's already kicked uh, five goals in front up there and I think that the short pass should have been directed toward the, the giant young Ruckman full forward. So he got the tap down, Salmon. There could have been a free kick St Kilda's way in there. Yes. Player being held. It's Tomei, who was being held, were not in possession, and he will take this free kick from only a few metres out from the Essendon goal. Well, in the first term, Essendon led by nine points, only three points at half-time, and we've seen a great three-quarters of football with the Bombers getting away in the third term. Well, that's another stupid free kick given away by Gene Sharon after a player had marked Jack there. We've seen him do that three times today, and I think that uh, it'll be, Tony Jewell would be well advised to speak to him about that. I'm pretty sure he will. It's, it's put Tim Watson within kicking distance as he fires at the goals and it's thumped through and that was by the ex-Carlton player in Greg Sharp and through for one behind. So Essendon just creeping ahead in behinds at the moment. They've moved on to, well, just wait on the scoreboard at the moment. They're 
a little bit slow. 14 15 to St Kilda, 12 goals, 10. As we see coming away with the ball, Robert Alfredston. He kicks it wide, looking there for Max Crow, who early in the match was switched from centre half forward to the back line, not because he was performing poorly, but because they had injuries. There's the kick coming down towards centre half forward. Madden's there all alone and takes an easy mark at centre half back. Simon Madden hand passes over to Neagle. Neagle trying to break away, goes back on the left foot, tries to do a little bit too much here. I thought may have run a shade too far. The umpire said no. The ball driven upfield now and Hawker hand passes in. A hand pass will come to Williams who will put the pressure on the St Kilda defenders now as he drives long, going back to take the mark and a good mark at that. Uh, should have been paid, I thought, to Sharp. The umpire has paid that one. Holding the man actually signalled two, two in the end, Jack. Holding the man as he uh, against Terry Danaher as the ball is at Alphonston or Sharp. It's Sharp this time. They look very alike, the ex-Carlton Backman and also the St Kilda captain Robert Alphonston. Here's Greg Burns hooking it back on. Oh, poor that, kick. Right. Mahaja intercepts, comes off his hand over the line and out of bounds, almost on centre wing. Well, Essendon took control, as I said, about halfway through the third term. And they're holding sway now, 99 to 82, only 17 points, but they're playing better football than St Kilda at present and getting more backup. There's uh, Hawker to Donnell. He'll be looking for the Big fellow, yes, he's gone towards Salmon, who did well, stood his ground, bumped the opposition oh. out and took a nice, clean mark dead in front good, of him. He is a real good player because Max Crow is about six foot five, Salmon would be six nine, and yet that was not so much height, Jack, it was hip and shoulder stuff, wasn't it? Use the it? body. Beautiful use of the body, and uh, he's learnt very, very quickly in league football, Paul Salmon, and as he's already kicked how many? Five, Jack? Yes, five. Five goals, lining up for his sixth. He's been out a little bit further than this on a few occasions and hasn't quite made the distance. But from here, which is only 35, 40 metres out, he should score. He scored all right, the wrong side of the post, only one behind. He does appear to have a little bit of a tendency not to be able to get the ball a long way, Peter. Yeah, he's off not the a boot. powerful kick at no. all. And uh, as soon as he gets, uh, there's that packet, centre half back again. There's a good camera shot of it. Look, and then they run to then the they sides. Break out. About five or six of them just break out. And it's been coming off all day. There's the ball over the back of the pack. No one uh, can get away with the ball. In goes Bahaja, picks it up beautifully, gets it to Donnell. Donnell on the left foot, a beautiful kick as he centres it to centre half forward. And there's a beautiful mark, too taken there by Simon Madden at centre half foot. Oh, poor players he went to play on. Uh, copying one across the neck there was Gary Bowles, the umpire, umpire side bottom right onto that one and he'll take the free kick getting towards the centre half forward area for the bomber. Well I think he'll kick long. Bowles is a great kick. You can see a lead by Danaher though and that's the lead he's gone for and a good pass, good mark, good football. Yes, Danaher took up a position in front of Salmon there. Now the Folds had the option of either Danaher or to go for the long kick to Salmon. Well, he chose the lead and he used the ball well. He's a beautiful kick, Gary Foles, and we've seen him do that three or four times today. Beautiful foot disposal down to the, his forwards. Should score from here, Danaher. Yes, Salmon indicates it's gone right through. The umpire set another goal, so Essendon go to 100 points and St Kilda 82. Yes, and Terry Danaher has kicked three goals as... Uh, well, he hasn't been an outstanding player, I wouldn't think, but he has really uh, contested all day as uh, we see the scoreboard, 15-16 to 12-10. 106. 106 to 82, is it? It is. Right. And uh, the Bombers gradually getting on top. At the bounce, Madden got it down to left foot tap. All punched on by Pashini. In the Packers, uh, Bradbury being caught for one of the few occasions this afternoon. And uh, Cross will take this free kick. He'll be looking for young Tomei. Not a good kick. Tomei came out to contest anyhow, but Kerry gets the hand pass down. It's been punched out by Brown. Sharon thought of a hand pass to Tomei. He's run into trouble. That wasn't good football, but more with being held. Should have been a free kick. And the umpire said no. I think Gene, Char Gene Charon just doesn't want to kick the football, Jack. He had, he had a shot at goal there if he wanted it for a goal for his asking and uh, elected the hand pass to Morwood, who was in all sorts of trouble. Kick by Carey. Comes up to Cox. Can't take the mark. And Bradbury taps it down. Silvio Pacini caught in possession. Now Cox picks up. Goes for a hand pass back out. That's been taken here and been taken away by Williams. Williams kicks long. There are no leads. It's going to be a St Kilda mark for mine, but they all contested together, which gives Salmon the opportunity. He's lost possession. The umpire calls play on. Bahaja ducks ahead. Now centres the ball and a good pass too. 
He's chopped it up there within 15 to 20 metres of goal, and the kick will be taken by Ezard. There's St Kilda defenders, Peter, there contested the mark against each other. So no one down, all up, no one down, and now Essendon have the opportunity to, I would say, just about seal the game. It's very close, that shot. Yes, another goal to Essendon, 1-1-2, one, one, playing 83. And that's two goals to Alan Ezard. Nippy little rover around that forward line and given away by Melbourne almost to Essendon for next to nothing, apparently. And has been a pretty good player for the Bombers since going out to Windy Hill. Now, Max Crow is coming away from the back line. Well, I'm, uh, it's a, I think it's a tragedy that uh, Crow is not down on the forward line, to be quite honest. That's his best position, centre-half forward. Yes, well, when Salmon ran right in the first term, uh, Tony Jewell had no option but to try yep. something different. Danell on the left foot. Narkel is there. Leaves it for his teammate. Now he's got a Phil Narkel on the right foot. He kicks it down towards half forward. Which way will it bounce? Out comes Lockett. Taps it away beautifully to Glenn Brown. Onto the left foot. That's great play, Brown, as he finds. Oh, he's dropped. He's dro oh, boy, a sitter was dropped by Paul Morwood. He could have just walked into an open goal. And he fumbled the pass. And a golden opportunity has gone begging. Well, I think every picture tells a story in that toll. Boundary throw in. St Kilda's forward zone. Crow doing the ruck work. Looked for the free kick, which wasn't paid. Been driven out of trouble up there by uh, Williams. And no mark taken on the half forward line, though. Sharon looking for a hand pass. It's been taken by Cronin. Cronin dummies one. Goes on the left foot, kicks high. A chance for Young Lockett, but Big Madden's dropped down there against him. Over the heads of those players it goes and thumped through by Hurd. And Hurd gets up and has a go at Cunningham. And they've come in from all. Two cu Cunningham's. Brotherly love there, Jack. So the umpires with their hands full down there in the goal square. We've had a few of these today. I haven't seen any reports. I haven't noticed any. I'm not saying there hasn't been any. There's an umpire in there somewhere. <laughs> And underneath there, I think, is either Hurd or Cunningham getting up off the ground. A lot of pushing and shoving going on, and a lot of the other players aren't interested. Cunningham having a few words to say to the umpires, and Hurd appears though he's going to get the free kick. So that it is. 84 playing 112, Essendon leading, the hand pass disallowed. The ball has to go back from the player in question as uh, Shane Hurd. Heard looking up to the half-back zone. Goes for the long kick now. Sharon awaits the arrival of the ball. Yes, oh, then he dropped it. Taken by Donnell. Given out to Neagle. Neagle breaks away onto the left foot with a hand pass, though. He goes. It's been taken by Weston over to Bradbury. It bounces. Not bad for him. Bradbury, ball! Ball! And the umpire said a free kick to Bradbury. He missed him. Yes. My word. Do you think he got him, uh, Jack? No, he didn't. Eagle squeaks away with the ball on centre wing. Kicks towards Salmon again. Out comes the big bloke and he's marked it again. Well, what can you say about Paul Salmon? He has been an absolute headache all day for the St Kilda defence. He has been in scintillating form up there. He's already kicked, uh, what's that, five goals. He must have had at least ten shots for goal, Jack. Well, he has. He's had many shots for, shots for goal. For goal. And this time he is well within distance, as you can see. The camera shot right behind Paul Salmon as he comes in looking for goal number six. There it is, under the boot, a wobbly old kick, but it's gone straight through the centre. Eventually, even another goal to Paul Salmon, his goal number six. Yes, there he goes now, taking a spell in the ruck. Relieving uh, Simon Madden, evidently. So he's coming up into the ruck position now. 1-1-8 is the Essendon score, 17-16, and St Kilda, 12 goals, 11. Salmon. Oh, it favours him too, he should get this tap. He does, he taps it straight down, but taken away by his rover in Williams. Williams on the left foot, drives up towards Danaher, late on the scene, tried to knock the ball on. It comes to turf, down goes Keel. Hawker after the ball now, Sharp went through between them. And the ball socket off the turf. Well picked up by Hawker, but it's down on centre wing position. He hooks it back toward the half forward zone. Danaher sets himself, so does Crow. Crow doesn't get into the action at all, really. Uh, looks like Neagle going through, yes. Neagle coming out on the right foot. 
tries to place a kick over toward the half forward zone in Bradbury. Bradbury being tackled, not in possession, goes for a short pass, and it's all Essendon now. An easy uh, pass, shot down to Folds. It will take the shot for goal from only 30 metres out. Yes, and Kilda have uh, fallen in the hole at the moment. The greater experience of Essendon and their height has certainly got on top of the young Saints, and they, I think they've lost a lot of confidence, and uh, the Bombers are running all over the top of them at the moment, as was evidenced by that easy little chip pass coming across to Foles. He was there by himself too, Peter, no opposition whatsoever. Gary Foles right in front, stabs at that one, the goal umpire runs across and says it is one point. So the Bombers off target there, but they have a very, very good lead at the moment. 17 goals, still waiting on that scoreboard attendant who's pretty slow. Slow with the Essendon ones, uh, Jack, but very quick with the St Kilda scores. It does appear up. that way, doesn't it? Essendon go into attack now through Dan Hur. Could goal from here. He's hooked it a bit too far over the heads of the players and through for one behind only. So that will make Essendon 17, 18, 120. St Kilda 12 goals, 11, 83. And uh, it's all, it appears to be all Essendon now. The first half uh, was really great football, very even football. In the full back position, Narkle should take this. No, he doesn't. He gets it again. Run it well. Looks for lead downfield. Cunningham's lead. Cross is dropping back now. He should go to cross, or he's looking for his young full forward. Down he goes. Lockett can't take the mark. Free, Free kick to Lockett. Yeah, so push him right in the middle of the back there, Jack. Well, young Tony Lockett has kicked six goals, and I reckon he should have kicked ten. Well, he missed uh, in the first quarter. He missed two from what, 25, 30 metres out, yeah. directly in front. So, uh, and he missed a very easy one in the third turn from about 10 metres on the angle. But Tony Lockett going for his seventh goal. Look at who they put on the mark, will you? No, poor, but, <laughs> poor Sam. You'll have to kick high to get over him. Lockett kicks toward goal. He's got his seventh goal for mine. From where I said it's a goal for Tony Lockett. So. St Kilda 89 points and Essendon 120. Great performance by young Tony Lockett at full forward today. He's been an absolute star. He's had four opponents. At the moment, uh, Stephen Carey is uh, on him. That's his fourth. I think he's, what, Billy Duckworth's been there. Uh, Paul Weston has been there. And who was the other one? Now you name it, they've all been there. Yeah. But Lockett's won the day. At the centre bounce, throw, salmon. Throws tap down to Cunningham. No, it beat him. A chance for Burns. It beat him. Uh, it beat everyone at that stage of the game. Toronto over on it too. It's in among a pack of players in there. And the umpire wisely has decided a bounce would be the best thing to do. And that's exactly what he is going to do. Right on the edge of the square there, which would be favouring St Kilda's half forward line, of course. They're in attack. Crow. Now the ball eludes him. Punched out by Bahadja of all people. It comes out towards Sharon. The hand pass comes into Silvio Vashini. He goes very short. Keel hand passes back. A bad one to Cronin. Cronin got out of trouble beautifully there. Goes for a short pass into Morwood. Morwood sets himself and takes them up. Well, Morwood could uh, score from here, Paul Morwood. He's within kicking distance. He'll ha have to aim at that right hand goal post because the breeze that's blowing here is coming across from his left to right hand side. That's the way he's shaping up. He's crabbing in a bit. He's kicked into the man on the mark. Narkle had a little look behind him to see what was there and skillfully picks up. Hooks it back toward goal. Lockett's there but can't get into the action. Tried to pick it up quickly, but it's through for one behind. So St Kilda only increased their scoreboard tally by the one behind. 90 now to 120, which is a difference of 30 points. Five goals. And the Bombers stream away from uh, the fence. You will see Gary Foles there playing his useful, ever reliable game. That's almost holding the ball because he bounced it. Yes, the umpire is indicating that he bounced it when he was being held. And Andrew Cross will take this free kick on centre wing. He's looking for the short pass. He's found Phil Narkle. He can play on if he wants to. He gives the hand pass across to Fashini, who fires at the goals. And I think he's put it through. He has a lovely goal to Silvio. That's good football. Good football by Phil Narkle. Took the pass and quickly looked for the man going past because Narkle had his back to the goal. Shot it to uh, Fashini who popped it through. So 96 to 120 now. Essendon still leading, but St Kilda not giving up without a fight. As I told you, the first half was great football and then Essendon got a good break in the third turn. 
at the bounce. Crow opposes Salmon. Salmon got the tap down. I think it bounced off the umpire. That's how it appeared. Narkel's in there, hooked it backwards, but now it's picked up by Hurd. Give it to Watson. Watson looking upfield. He can't see any leads as yet. No one home, so he carries the ball right down to the half forward zone. In pursuit is Morwood, but Watson now places the ball to Danaher. And a fine piece of football by Tim Watson. Great play, Watson. Danaher sneaking around. He's got no hope. Terry Danaher, I think he'll be dragged back about five metres towards the boundary line and still going back towards the boundary line. He's kicked three, Terry Danaher. There's good unselfish play. Great catch. Poor defence by St Kilda. Very yep. poor defence. Darren Williams called for the lead. He's more towards the centre and he'll have an easy shot for goal, whereas Terry Danaher realised it would have been a very difficult kick. Darren Williams. How many is that? He's kicked one already today, Darren. He is only 15 metres out directly in front. This should be his second. The drop punt. Kicks it very, very hard. The goal up by says it's a goal and the Bombers move further in front. Yeah, it's a nice piece of work by Watson to get that ball down. A good pass too to find Danaher. Then good thinking by Danaher to uh, open the goals up by giving the short pass into uh, young uh, Williams. But uh, there was very poor defence on the part of the St Kilda players there, Peter. They didn't close yep. up any any loose players at all. 30 points the difference, Essendon leading. Crow and Salmon both made contact. Bahaja gets it out. Bradbury being a great player. Kicks the ball well with the left foot up toward the half forward zone. Big pack came in. Williams again will take a snap at goal. The goals are open. Madden after it. Uh, can he get there? No, he does the shepherding. Good, good football, <laughs> giving Ezard the opportunity. Mace does the tackling, but the ball is out of bounds. I know why he did the shepherding too. He, Big Simon was exhausted charging up that ball and had a look around and thought, I can't get to this, I'll do the shepherding <laughs> instead and leave it to the little blokes. Well, it was still a good thing. It was good play by Simon Madden. Tries to get it down to the ground. Oh, the pack's in there after it again. Kicked off the ground by Peter Keel. Towards the boundary line it goes. He takes it over the line and out of bounds. And this game... At the moment, at a bit of a stalemate, the Bombers have it well in hand. And uh, the young St Kilda side, well, they've tried very, very hard. I think it certainly made a huge difference when side bottom went off the ground and they were badly under man in the big man department. Here's a bounce going the to take The loss of Muir, uh, Robert Muir, Well, Robbie too. Muir, too. He wasn't, wasn't a, an outstanding player, Jack, but he was in there and he was throwing his weight round fairly and he was uh, encouraging his teammates. He was a bad loss. Here's a high one to take, and well taken down there by Elphinstone. Robert Elphinstone playing out wide to Pashini. Might be a bit long for him. No, he did it well. He balks the opposition in Neagle. And Pashini from half-back carries it down. He's in trouble again. Trying to do a bit too much, but does it well. He goes out towards Jeff Cunningham, who takes the mark half-forward on the flank. He's on the flank out of side, going for a short again. The pass was meant for a cross, but Folds chipped in to take it. Essendon. That's what I mean about the kicking, Jack. Well, as I was saying earlier, when he made a liar on me, that was a poor kick by Jeff Cunningham there. So he was looking for his brother. There's the short pass coming up towards Duckworth, who marks at centre half back. He plays on and gives the hand pass across to Shane Hurd. He dummies and gives the hand pass further afield there to Neagle. Neagle to half forward with Danaher has come right into the game after half time. He's a good, strong overhead mark, yes, isn't he? Yes, he certainly is. He looks for Cox. Cox playing against his old club. And he can kick a football and the hoots of the crowd, the Securities. Now, he is a very long kick, Duck Cox. I don't think he'll have any trouble with the distance, even though he's into the slight breeze. Well, he's taking plenty of time to line it up. Made good contact, but it's not there. The breeze has done the rest. Uh, hasn't quite lined it up properly. And only one behind on the St Kilda fans seem to think that's justice. So whether it be justice or not, it's one point to Essendon. Their score being changed. You are right about that fellow on the scoreboard. When Essendon score, it's very, very slowly getting up there. 18, 19, 1, 2, 7 to 14, 12, 95 is the story here. And Narkel. Clever. Big tackle, well done. Picks up cleanly, takes the bounce and backs <laughs> himself. Goes, though, once again an ill-directed pass and taken away by Folds. Gary Folds of Essendon taking plenty of time now. He'll be looking for a teammate up there. Coming out as Robert Mason, a clean mark taken by that player. Robert Mace from wing position, looking down towards the... Folds again, uh, takes the away. That's three in a row he's turned out. Played pretty well today, too. He's a reliable player, Folds, and uh, as we said earlier, a great kick, Jack. He is. Duckworth got that one moving up toward ba uh, Baker. Baker moves it out now, off the left foot. 
Charge for Elphinstone, up the hands of it, didn't hold it. Hawker just about pitched that for Harger, caught in possession. Elphinstone once again goes back in the pack and the umpire said he was being held. So a free kick to Robert Elphinstone who puts the ball out quickly out to the oh, wing position where it should have been taken by Sharp. He got the ball moving quickly but to the opposition. Simon Madden grabs it and on that left foot up towards Danaher. Oh, oh good mark. great mark, Silvio. Silvio Pescini, a one-hander and oh, he does those mercurial things every now and again, uh, Silvio, as he gets it towards the half-back line. There's the kick on the left foot there. Coming down towards centre wing, punched away from Bullmore. That was Peter Keel getting it down there on the left foot. And uh, it'll be interesting to see his performance this year because he was a very, very promising player in his first year with the Saints. That he was. Essendon lead by 31 points. Duckworth gets it out of trouble, kicks it up. Bahaja should do the roving. Yes, he's positioned himself well for it. He doesn't quite get there, though. Picked up by Baker, who's going on the left foot looking for Salmon. Salmon, very agile for a man of six foot nine. Shoots at goal, but he's gone right across the face of the goal, and the ball trickles out of bounds. So it'll be a boundary throw in in Essendon's forward pocket for this position, only about 20 metres away from the behind post, maybe even less. So the big ruckman in there will be Salmon. Yes, left tap down. Uh, well tackled, though. Up I said tackled too high. I thought it was a good tackle, so I was wrong. The umpire was right there. I didn't see the hand come across the shoulder, so it must have done that. So it should be an easy goal coming up for Essendon now, who are leading by 31 points as I speak. Danaher shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever because he's only about oh, 20 metres out from where he'll kick, and he's going for his fourth goal. Already three to his credit. And being a good player too for Essendon. Oh, what did I say? And what has he done? He's missed it. Well, we've seen some very poor kicking for goal today, Jack, for considering it's a perfect day for football. Absolutely perfect. No sun and hardly any wind. And there's the kick again coming out from the back line. They've, they've done that to perfection today. Tomei comes away with it, looking there for Narkel. Narkel in front, couldn't take the mark. It's thumped away. Bradbury was in there after it. Umpire comes in to, look, to deliberate, and he says, it's my ball, and he'll bounce it right on that true centre wing position. Well, it's a long way from St Kilda's goal as it is a long way from Essendon's goal. And the bounce with Crow out there and Matt, former teammates, but now opposition. It's come to turf and hurried out of the pack by whom I'm not too sure. It comes Rush. up towards Carey. Well done. Uh, Lockett contested that, and then uh, Cunningham got in his way. So he got bundled out of position, and the umpire said, but you will get a free kick for it. So Cunningham wouldn't make the distance from there. He'll have to go short or hope that someone can take a big mark. Players do battle in the air. The ball comes to turf and pours through 4-1 behind only. So St Kilda can't get goals, which they desperately need. And Essendon quite content to see the ball trickle through 4-1 behind. The Bombers on 18-20, 1-28. And the score being shown for St Kilda, 14-13-97. Over the back is Peter Bradbury again, who's been a very, very good player today. On the left foot up to Vanderhaar, who's been on and off the ground a few times. He goes in after it, tries to kick it off the ground, or his opponent Sharp did, in fact, in the end. There's a hand pass coming across to Hawker. Hawker gives it back to Williams. Williams with a hand pass over the top there, looking to Vanderhaar. Vanderhaar into the open goal, goes for the short one, and chips in to take a good mark as Robert Alfredston he immediately gives, gets it across to Tomei Tomei with the kick looking down there towards Greg Burns and the ball beats he and Watson both over the line and out of bounds boundary throw in to take place on the centre wing position in front of the St Kilda stand area Madden and Crow come in Crow the front uh, Madden the front position but Crow got the tap to Nell can't gain possession Another chance for Morwood. He can't get it out cleanly. Hand pass comes out to Watson from Duckworth. Watson moves the ball quickly into the open territory. Uh, Van der Haar not moving very freely. Peter didn't no, seem to be no. moving too freely, Peter, and uh, he couldn't gain it before it went over the boundary line. I'd say he's carrying a leg injury, by the way. He moved for that, whether it's a groin or a hamstring or something, but he certainly wasn't stretching out, Jack. No, he wasn't moving very well at all. Boundary throw in again, Essendon in attack from the half forward zone and quickly put on the boot by Baker up towards Bandahar, taking the ball away. Oh, it's going to be good football here as St Kilda can get it moving. Yes, that was Greg Sharp getting it down towards Max Crow. Crow has been uh, forward line and back line today, but as usual gives oh, it to Daryl Cunningham, caught holding the ball and he should never have played on there, but still looks easy from up here as Watson gets it down towards half forward, grabbed by Neagle. Neagle goes for the short one. Now there's Van Haar again. Oops. No way known as he 100% fit. He's crook. 
not good at all. No, I'd say he's certainly carrying some sort of an injury because he could not stretch at all as he went for that mark. Seems a shame to leave him on the ground if he's so incapacitated. But the boundary throw in with Salmon winning it. Comes to uh, Williams, is it? He shoots at goal. He's off target and it goes through. No, it goes out of bounds. I thought it might have stuck in for a point, but out of bounds on the full. So it will be a free kick going the way of Elphinstone. Elphinstone of St Kilda looking down toward the uh, to Morwood on the wing position. Oh, too short for him though, and Baker chips in. He's done a couple of nice things. Yeah, very typical West Australian. All the skills in the world, either feet, Jack. Up towards Salmon. Is that another mark? It is. There he is, the big, tall, six foot nine ruckman. He's going to he break. He's about to kick goal number seven. He's going to break some hearts of full backs this year, I think. How would you be? Uh, how would you be at six foot three, even at full back? A bloke like David Dench having to pick up uh, Paul Salmon. I think what's going to happen, of course, opposing sides will have to put their big, tall, six foot five, six ruckman resting down there on him. Jack will take think. out a chainsaw and cut his legs off or something like. That. <laughs> well, there he is as he stabs at the ball and there it goes through goal number seven the ball salmon yes he's played very very well indeed he's been the focal point and it's great as i said earlier in the commentary peter to, to having your team a fellow that you know you can kick the ball up high and uh, when you've got a fellow six foot nine he should take a mark or two shouldn't he and he's, he's taken penny today they haven't just re rested him there either they've thrown him into the ruck and, no. and kept him working so uh, kevin sheet is a hard taskmaster Centre bounce again, 134 to 97. Essendon taking control, and this is the final turn. Comes down to Burns. Burns' hand passes out. Oh, little kick gets it moving. Alfredston down towards half forward, and Doug Cox will get the hoots probably of the St Kilda supporters as he's playing against his old club. He kicks towards half forward. Danaher up he went, couldn't quite take it. It's grabbed there by Cronin as the siren sounds to win the match here at Moravid Essendon in the finish.